Hello, hello, hello. Welcome everyone to this live stream and joining me all the way from Germany is Dr. and Grandmaster Carsten Mueller. Hello, Carsten. How are you doing? Hello, Zaga. I'm fine. Thank you and thanks for inviting me to your show. Yes, I have been on Endgame Magic before and you were the host and this time the roles are reversed. I'm very happy to have you and I want to tell all the viewers what a amazing personality you are. You are a very strong chess player. You are a fantastic chess coach. You are also a mathematician. You are also a prolific writer uh, of books and also you make... Uh, chess based products chess based dvds i mean what do you what do you prefer the most <laughs> tough question coaching with students when it fits well is of course very enjoyable like with lewis engel my co-author of the uh, dvd we are talking about uh, today but uh, i enjoy basically uh, everything so it's a very difficult question what is most enjoyable Okay. Okay. So this, what you spoke about right now, this Fritz trainer, which you have created called the four player, uh, four, four player model, right? Of, uh, so it's what I understand is that chess players can be bifurcated into four different types. And yeah, usually you have this, uh, bifurcation into tactical and strategic players. And of course, between calculating and intuitive players. And if you take this everything together, you get four types. This was introduced by Lars Bohansen in 2005. And I like this model a lot. It is, of course, more difficult, more, uh, more complicated than the uh, standard model with only tactical and strategic plays. But I think it also has a much stronger explanatory power. We, yeah, I hope that we will see that. So these are the four uh, yeah. ones, activists, pragmatists, theor theorists, and reflectors. Uh, I don't, actually on looking at it, activists seems natural. They are very active players. Pragmatists, not so clear. Theorists, I, I guess they might be very much dependent on theoretical stuff. But reflector, I, I don't understand what it is. Yeah, this is also for most uh, people the case. And reflector is uh, the most difficult and uh, deepest uh, problem as style to understand. For example, Anatoly Karpov is a reflector, Magnus Carlsen, Tigran Petrosyan, and already when hearing those names, uh, one sees that it is not so easy to play in that style. Mm. I can't play like Karpov. I can't look at as many Karpov games as I like. I could never play like Karpov. Right. But uh, you would explain more about that as we go through some of the examples and some of the games. Uh, I would also like the viewers that whenever a question is asked, you can give an answer and, you know, uh, Karsten would tell you, tell his thoughts about the moves and you would learn a lot in the process. So, Karsten, shall we begin with some examples? Yeah, let's start with hyperactivist style. Um, Botvinnik Tal, World Championship, Moscow, 1960, the famous six, ga six games, one of the most famous uh, games of all time. Tal won in his typical hyperactivist uh, style. Okay, activists um, often play for a king attack. It is an intuitive player type. Uh, hyperactivists like to sacrifice pieces for king attack. Mm. It, it, if it's correct or not, it doesn't matter. It, it, it should give attack. For, this is one difference to pragmatics. For pragmatic, it would be important that it's correct objectively. For a hyperactivist, it doesn't matter at all. So they are more risk takers. Yeah, uh, def definitely, definitely. Mm. And hyperactivists are willing to take extreme risks. And Tal was the only hyperactivist world champion. Other activist world champions are Alichin, uh, Spassky, Kasparov, and Anand. Okay. From the world champions. And by the way, I'm also an activist. And Suya Ganguly in my opinion, also is an activist. He, he will be joining us later today. And, uh, you know, Surya is very excited to know uh, why you think that that is his style and so on. So, Kasten has also looked at a couple of Surya's games, which we will check. Uh, there's a question by Newbie Gaming who says, can one become an expert in all four? 
Uh, this is a very good question, of course. And one aim, of course, uh, one can have is to be as universal as possible. Of course, we are all we, we are not so single minded. We are all more or less universal. And I think it, that you can um, train and learn activist uh, uh, abilities. This is possible. You can you can train this. You can look at Tar games, at Zuya games, and then you can get better there. Also, pragmatist qualities you can train. We, we can see later. Uh, you, you, this is ba would be basically be calculation training. You can do that. It will help, and you can get better there definitely. Hmm. And theorist qualities you can also train. You can look at system openings, look at typical games by Kramnik, by Geary, and typical of their openings, and then you can get better there. Uh. But you guessed it already from the beginning. <laughs> Reflector qualities are of a different quality. Mm. There might be this, you have them, you were born with them, or you don't have them. Really? You really? can potentially study as many cup of games as you like. Potentially, you can never play like Anatoly Karpov. This is a bad, new, bad news for us. But So you can train it, but with reflector qualities, I'm a bit skeptical. It's like I'm a musician who has an absolute hearing. You have this absolute hearing or you don't have it. Mm. So the reflectors are basically the legendary players only or... Well, there are also, I also knew a few uh, normal reflectors, but I guess that reflector is a relatively seldom type. Uh -huh. But this is just a, so, an So educated. someone like, let's say, Badur Jobawa or... Uh, it's, an act, it's an activist. He would be opinion. activist. Okay. I've still yeah. not understood reflectors so well, but maybe you could show us a few examples later. But I think also that reflectors are the most, by far, the most difficult to, to understand. I think, at least for me. <laughs> okay. Nitish asks, how do you classify alpha zero? Reflector. Reflector. Okay. You guessed it. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, we can't play like alpha zero. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we also can't train. And they trained. It's, uh, but okay, the thing is, of course, a bit, shall we then switch? Oh, shall we go on here with the activists or shall we go to the reflectors to get more insight into, into that stuff to discuss it? Let, with, let's do reflector because I'm so curious about reflector right now that okay, I, then, I would uh, really love and maybe people would also. Okay, then 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 please jump to the game uh, Cup of Spassky Leningrad 1974. Okay. Sure. I have it with me. Yeah. And uh, guys, we will have uh, Louis Engel, who is the co-author of this uh, Fritz Trainer, along with Carsten, and he will join us in some time. But yeah, here's the game uh, that is Karpo versus Pasky. Yeah, and then you, we, we should probably, before I go deeper into the reflector stuff, just to mention, world champions were Capablanca, Smyslov, Petrosian, Karpov, and Carlsen, to give you some more idea of what the style might might uh, be and then yeah i suggest to to go uh, yeah you just go ahead until the the 16th move has been made uh, it was a sicilian opening classical yeah Karpov got his openings from his trainers in a certain way maybe these open sicilians didn't suit his reflector style optimally but okay this is another topic of course mm. that's why he switched to d4 later yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is bad fits a reflector better, in my opinion. Mm. Okay, um, now uh, comes the first deeper. Okay, so far, white is better. White has the bishop pair. Um, yeah, uh, the, the light squares in black's camp are weak. The queen side is, is weak and so on. Yeah, Karpov's next move is a typical reflector move, in my okay. opinion. So we can ask the viewers, guys, what do you think white should play in this position? Try to think and try to come up with your answers. Uh, not an easy move. No, definitely not. A reflector style is most difficult, at least for me. Hmm. And I couldn't play like that myself. So the names that you suggested, Karsten, they were uh, Capablanca, Smyslow, Petrosian, Carlsen. Uh, these Karpov. Are, Karpov. These are all uh, positional players, no? Yes. So does and that mean the, reflector is more positional? And or? yes, yes. On on the two axes, its reflector is, posi is positional, strategic, and uh, intuitive. Hmm. This uh, is uh, on this model. 
of the two axes, the position of the reflector. Other reflectors are Michael Adams, Akiba Rubinstein, Vincent Keimer, and the computer programs Alpha Zero and Lila Zero, are in my opinion. Why would you call uh, Vincent a reflector? Because I thought his playing style is very active. Yeah, uh, reflectors, yeah, 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 reflectors do. Uh, but uh, yeah, he is very strong in strategical endgames. This is a typical reflector strength, like Magnus Carlsen or Anatoly Karpov, a very typical reflector strength. Um, he, um, yeah, uh, he had to work a lot on his openings in a way. Often reflectors are not that interested in the direct openings and have to work a lot with seconds, coaches, and others on the openings, like Karpov or Carlsen. They, they don't need to get an objective advantage from the openings. It's just enough if they have a playable strategical, uh, strategic position. Mm. For the reflector, it's not so important what the, com if, what the computer evaluation is. More important is that it uh, fits their okay, reflector yeah. style. Magnus Carlsen can play any opening where he can just, it can be zero, 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 it doesn't matter. He can just, he just wants to play mm. like Vincent in a, in a way. Vincent openings are also maybe, I don't want to say weakness, but you, you know what I want to say. <laughs> right. Right. But uh, don't you think then hyper uh, activists is also a style that cannot be learned like reflectors, but not in the positional sense, but in the attacking sense. Uh, but it can be learned easier. You have uh, Tal's guidelines, centralize and sacrifice. If the opponent attacks one of your pieces, attack two of his, always play uh, centralize and sacrifice. It can, it, it can be easier copied. Mm -hmm. Of course, you won't be as successful as Tal because the defense is now stronger than in the old days. But I think hyperactivist can be learned more easily, but is of course also more risky. Mm. You can of course also lose more games like that. Got it. Okay. So here are the uh, suggestions right now. One second. Uh, we have a few moves that this is very difficult and we don't have to make a science out of it it is of course very difficult it's a typical very strong cup of regrouping move yes but it's already queen f1 suggested by Safal fazil till will rian shah and uh, many of them but also queen e2 has been suggested and rook but queen e f1 queen f1 i like more because it doubles on the f file on e2 the queen is more in the way of the other pieces mm -hmm. the, the reflectors have a very feeling for coordination of the pieces and on e2 white has a traffic jump in a way the, the square e2 is a traffic jump square while on f1 everybody is free right so this is more it's not concrete calculation it's just feel uh, in reflector is not a concrete style the concrete styles are theorist and pragmatic and the intuitive styles are activist and reflector, and it has an intuitive feeling. Got it. Okay, so queen f1 was played here. Yeah. And, uh, then queen c8, h3, knight d7, and then another big moment comes. What now with white? Right. A very big moment and a typical reflector strength. Okay. Uh, what should white play in this position? What do you think, guys? And again, it has an intuitive feeling to it, definitely. It's not, it, it's not that White is winning by concrete things. Karpov just slowly and slightly increases his advantage by dominating the enemy, restricting him and um, exchanging the right pieces. Mm. By the way, Typical people, reflector stings. People are thinking about the move. Rian Shah says BG5, Mr. Dam says Bishop E2. Paras Bhoir says Rook D1, Harsh Thakur BG5, and uh, Vishal Sharma BG4, Till will BG4. Mira BG4, Bhoir. let's take BG4. Aha, Bishop G4, but uh, yeah. it pins the knight, right? And it prepares amazingly the exchange of this bishop, because afterwards, uh, uh, without the knight D7, Black has big defensive problems, as we can. It's a knight, but it has uh, defensive and dark squared counterplay purposes, and we want to take that just out of the position. Wow. So h5, you just take. Yeah. Yes. And queen c4 is clear. So now you want to double down the f file and put pressure here. And bishop h6 might be a threat in some moment. Mm, true. Yeah, it's, it's getting very, very difficult for, for poor Spassky. Yeah, here was the last moment. This is, of course, a diff different question. It would be a pragmatic a strength of pragmatics. 
how to defend with black? This is a very, very difficult question. Guys, tough question from Carsten to all of you. What should you play in this position as black? By the way, while they think, uh, Carsten Shiv Shom, who is a strong player, a young, young boy, he says, wow, is that Carsten Mueller? He looks so different. I remember watching his endgame magic shows on chess base every week. So... <laughs> no, yeah, I think well. I, I think uh, so many people have grown up uh, and become stronger endgame players thanks to Carsten's show. So, absolutely. Okay, some of the suggestions here are Bhagirath says Rook D1, Rian says, um, no, Sri John says, sorry, uh, Black to play, yes. Uh, black to play, black to move. Sri John says Queen E6, Paras yeah. says Queen E6, Satvik says Queen E6. Queen E6 is the only move. But of course, it's a very tough decision. White is still better, and it's again Karp of Spassky. And Spassky, of course, is an activist. So he doesn't he doesn't want to suffer in that set end game forever. But Queen E6 is forced. So, so this you would say is a move that pragmatists would play. They would say yeah. that instead of letting my opponent get a lot of pressure let me exchange take double pawns but get activity back and yes one point and second point the move is absolutely forced ah. it's not a matter of style in a way you must play that move a chess has this component of course we have the styles but we also have the only moves true, true. right okay so instead of that spassky being an activist Made a mistake went bishop h4 Rook d2, queen e7. And now we have another question. What now with white? Uh, and uh, no, no, uh, Yeah, here we have a question. And here the styles uh, would give different answers, I think. Okay. I think reflectors give the cup of answer. And more concrete players could give white can also win directly. Mm -hmm. So, guys, what would you do here as white? Interesting because one move looks very obvious. But it is Which not is, obvious. But it's like, you know, your opponent can counterattack. So you have to calculate carefully. Ah, uh, I now see the different moves are rook f1 and bishop c5. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So by the way, in the chat, everyone, uh, okay, Mr. Dham says bishop h6, but Mira, Shubdeep, Riyan, Priya, Brata, Paras, Boyer all say bishop c5 here. And bishop c5 wins. And we can see that in the chat we have more concrete players than reflectors as we had guessed. <laughs> right. Yeah, bishop c5 wins. But then queen g5 is what they could have... I mean, they should know what to do to this, right? Yes. Rook ad81. Rook AD yeah. Here. And then white is winning. Yeah. Uh, rook takes d8. And rook f1 and... And then you win a pawn here. White wins a pawn first in the game later. A computer agrees this is the winning variation for white. Mm -hmm. But it's not a cup of variation, of course. Okay. So Ro but cup of smooth rook f1 is also winning. It's it's winning. It's it's as good as the other variation. It's winning. Rook f1 is just winning. But it and doesn't course, win material immediately. But it wins, yeah, but it wins in cup of style. Which, it wins by which domination. Is like, uh, strang strangling the opponent. So. Yes. Mm -hmm. Typical carp of style. Reflector style. Mm, rook fd8. And now please wait. One of the most famous moves of chess history. A typical deep reflector winning move. Okay, this, this move Spas Spassky for sure didn't expect. This move I remember having seen as a young kid. And I just couldn't understand it. And maybe for some of the viewers today, it will be the first time they will see this move. So what is why this, play here? This is why I think that you can't train the reflector style and you can't play. If you don't have it, you it's very difficult to get it. Very, very difficult. Can, can, I I couldn't not, can I not spend like a year studying games of Karpov, Smyslov, uh, Capablanca, everyone and... No? You can do it, but but afterwards you can't play like Capo. <laughs> that... uh, yeah. Unfortunately, I think it is just as easy as that because you 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 you, you can't you can't these these feeling these fine tune this deep understanding of the game and these fine tune intuition for dominance restriction and strategic questions you cannot get it by just 
looking at Karpov's games. It, it, it doesn't work like that. But I remember one of my friends, he's now a grandmaster, Swapnil Dhopade. He, he, when he was young, he picked up the book of Karpov's best games. And his style resembles very closely to Karpo because of that book. So don't you think okay. like when someone's very young, let's say nine-year-old or eight-year-old boy, and you give him whatever at that time to consume, his style will go closer to that? Yes, of course. He will be more universal and his style go in that direction, but he will not be as good as Karpov. Hmm. I guess. Right. I mean, of course, if uh, Magnus, when he was young, he may not have known he would be reflector, but he became one. Yeah, his, his performances showed. This is more natural, I, right. I think. Yeah. Okay. So some of the moves that are suggested are um, here. Shubhadeep Das says knight b1, but he's the only one who said. Everyone else wants to go bishop c5 or bishop f2. But knight b1 is a is an absolute um, is a very big move hmm. because the knight c3 is the misplaced piece. It brings the regrouping via d2 f3 into the game, and white can later play c3, and then black's queen side will be falling apart. Beautiful. It's just game over now. Hmm. The other moves are also interesting, but I'm sure that knight b1 is much stronger. Because now white is completely winning. Right. It's amazing. Really amazing. The knight c3 was misplaced. And reflectors have a very fine-tuned feeling for coordination, harmony of their own pieces. And how to destroy um, the harmony of the opponent's uh, army. Mm -hmm. So knight b1. And I, I'm sure that Spassky didn't expect this move. So it must have come as a surprise to him. Certainly. To me as well. Spassky, like me, is an activist. And activists often have the problem that they only look at forward moves for themselves or the opponent. And yeah, it's like that. Right. Okay. So knight b1 and then uh, king g7, c3. Push. Now king, king, king h2 also is a typical cup of move, by the way. King h2 is just just profi small prophylactic uh, move, typical for a reflector. Hmm. King h2, king g7, and then the knight goes back. And he doesn't. And yeah, rook e2, also big move. Yeah. Not to exchange, just keep the rook on the board because white profits. Reflectors are also very good at these questions of the right exchange. Hmm. They have a very, because these are often strategical, strategic questions, and they have the deep feeling. Uh, yeah, when it should be exchanged and when not. And here, but deeper inspection is clear. White must keep the rook because black has two rooks and doesn't, but, but white may double on the D file or on the F file and uh, black's pieces don't have enough uh, good squares and so on. Right. And he gets the knight in, the knight goes to F3 and F6. Yeah, here also, of course, the, the computer thinks knight g5 is the best move and immediately winning. But as you guess it, Michatal would have certainly played it and Karpov never. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now yeah, we it are just, understanding uh, these styles better. Rook d2 is, of course, Karpov's move also winning. Right. And Bishop queen e6 to the heart of the position. Rook. D8 taking, bishop if, takes. If you take now, I think knight g5 would be very strong. Ah, or knight e5. Actually. Or even knight e5. But of course, here some calculation is now needed, of course, after queen to c7. some square. Some calculation is might be needed. Hmm. Check. King H8 is forced. So ah, the if what? This is uh, a variation that you have provided. Ah, okay, then then it's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so rook f3 and the rook comes to g3. <laughs> but this has a bit activist. Uh, this has, has, of course, a bit activist or pragmatic quality to it. We sacrifice material for the attack. And here, of course, as Carp of his reflector, it, it must be provable by calculation that it wins. Otherwise, Karpov wouldn't go here. Hmm. So rook takes 8 bishop d8, and now rook d1. And now the bishop moves in 
rook h8 and now last move yeah for them to guess yeah okay guys last move in this game what should white play here uh mira tripathi says what category could fisher be in pragmatic pragmatic uh -huh. not he is an exemplary no he is an exemplary pragmatic ah but not actually he never plays one reason i can give is he never played incorrect sacrifices activists play incorrect sacrifices oh. dozens fisher never played an incorrect sac at least yeah when fisher sacrificed material it was based on calculation and it was almost always correct mm. and an activist wouldn't care too much about the correctness so you said anand comes in activist right definitely of course but yes. why why because anand why not pragmatist of course uh, activists and pragmatics have a relatively large uh, how to say both overlap both, um, yeah overlap overlap most players start as activists and become more and more pragmatic uh, but i think anand is an activist he likes dynamic play he often plays very well with the uh, knights he has a very fine intuit intuition also for counterplay and dynamics so in my opinion anand is a clear activist okay by the way in this position paras bhoir priya brita sinha Rushank Simpi, Rian Shah have mentioned Rook takes D8, which wins by force, and was the last move of the game. Yeah, because after takes there is Bishop. E7 Bishop E7, and then and everything falls apart. Okay, beautiful game, beautiful game, and we we learned a lot about reflector style. And while we were discussing, we also have uh, our co-host joining in. Uh, sorry, uh, co-guest. Joining in Louis Engel, who is here. I don't know if. <laughs> yes, Hi. he's here. Louis, how are you? I'm fine, thanks. How are you? Very good. And guys, I must tell you, Louis is a German grandmaster. He's only 20 years old. You, you're not yet 20, 19 maybe. Um. Yeah, 19. Okay, wonderful. And uh, Louis, you work together with Carsten, uh, who has been your trainer. Uh, and you guys worked on this four player uh, model on types of players. Uh, and I think you worked on two styles and Kasten worked on two styles. Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. So I I made the pragmatics and the reflectors and, and Kasten made the activists and the theorists. And we, we tried to, to put the player types to us because it fits better to our own style. So maybe we can also explain better how the style works and... Yeah, that's why we split it into uh, that each of us will, will make two styles. And um, yeah, I think that was actually a pretty good um, how we made it. So um, yeah, that was Louis, our, our plan. Are you, are, you, are you a reflector, Luis? Um, actually, not at all. I'm a pragmatic. But <laughs> <laughs> And to be honest, it was quite tough for me to, to get into the, the material and to, to work it out. But I think neither Carsten nor I are reflectors. So... We, we are like some of the three other types, but the reflector is still missing in our uh, crew. So maybe we need someone like Vincent Keimer who would be in reflector, but uh, unfortunately we are not. Mm. Amazing. Actually, uh, at some some point, you know, uh, Carsten and Luis, uh, today we'll have one uh, very strong Indian GM joining us whose style you will try to dissect. Carsten has already analyzed a few games but you know Carsten one interesting thing could be these young talents like a uh, lot of people always have these questions Nihal Sarin, Pragnananda, Arjun Erigesi, Gukesh and I think putting them in these styles could really uh, they, they want to know what is the difference between them because all of them very young and have reached 2600 plus but this could be an interesting thing yes of course and it's not so easy to answer and when you are young you have still more potential to develop, of course. Hmm. The older you get, uh, the more, the, yeah, usually the easier it is with those styles and so on. Yeah, it's a bit difficult. I think Gukesh is a pragmatic in a way, a bit like, like Lewis, maybe slightly better than Lewis, but similar style to Lewis. Yeah. Ah, okay. Others are more difficult to answer. 
But I think we have, uh, yeah, Vincent Keimer is a reflector. Gukesh is no reflector. And yeah, Prague is, could be reflector. Let's yeah, has it. some reflector qualities, but yeah, we will see. We will see what the future will bring. Sure, sure. Absolutely. Okay, what should we see next? I suggest then to look at the activists, uh, the hyperactivists at uh, Bodvinik Tal at the Black 17th move, because I also think that that is very, um, yeah, relatively easy to understand them. Okay. So let's have a look at this very famous game uh, between this was the position. Tal, Bod Bodvinik and Tal, yeah. <coughs> And black is to move. What would the viewers the <laughs> what would the viewers play? Uh, white is better in white is slightly better anyway. That's relatively clear. White has a space advantage. It's Botvinik would I think like his position here uh, at the moment. <laughs> Tal is to move. Okay. And what should black um, what should, what should black, black do? Play in this position, guys. Try to think, and also what you suggest. <laughs> Could be interesting. Here's a question by Nitish who says, when you play bullet chess, don't you think everyone becomes an activist? Has something, yeah. Yeah. In a way. Mm -hmm. But still, Magnus still remains his reflector qualities, yeah, in a way. Okay. But, klar, yeah, the shorter the time is, the more you will play the activist moves. I'm, I basically agree. Shubdeep Das says F5, Deval Saula says Rook C3, Mira Tripathi says Rook C4. But, but... Rook C4 is what Tal played, hmm. but objectively Rook C4 is a mistake. It's a hyper-activist or activist move, but objectively it's a mistake, according to the computer. Hmm. Um, yeah, the com best computer move, by the way, Queen C4 is a mistake from the human point. It would have been a big mistake from the human. It's, chess is a rich game in a way. Yeah? The best computer move, Queen C4, is a mistake from the uh, Tal. If Tal had played Queen C4, he would have lost for sure. No matter what the computer says. Because it's not his style. I think the best compromise between all this stuff is Black uh, Tal should have played B5. Mm. It's also an activist move. But it weakens the square C6. But okay, the square C6, Tal is willing to give pieces and the square C6, you guessed it. I think B5 is the best compromise in a way between two words. I think it's the second computer move <coughs> and it's still an activist move. By the way, uh, one weakness of activists, of course, are wrong pawn moves. Ah. I know what I'm talking about. Mm. Okay, but let, so B, B5, I think, is the best uh, compromise from the style point of view between the best computer move and the tile move. But okay, let's go on with Grok C4. Okay. Yeah, objectively, this is a mistake. Black but can't go to active. Uh, said F5. Is that a bad move here? Uh, good. Well, I, I think the idea will also become important later on, but right now, I think white can just take. Uh, you have to take with the bishop and then just Rook C1. And I think you've just weakened more squares like the e4 square, and there's also uh, g4. So, like, has to retreat his knight or his bishop. And I, I think that's Vinic not would have good. loved to play this position. Yeah, but Vinic was already would already be over, over, uh, overflowing with joy. <laughs> right, right. Okay, so but Vinic is a theoretician, by the by the way, and this, of course, would be a typical position a theoretician would love. Ah, so theoretician is not just limited to openings, but also limited to the standard uh, positional concepts. Excuse me, but Vinik is a, yeah, it's just my mistake. But Vinik is a theorist. Yes. Uh, and we have to, uh, theoretician is different from ah, theorist. Right, right. So, no, I was saying that theorists does not only mean in your, uh, by for, like what you have made the categorization, it's not uh, only we about talk, we talk we talk Lars Bohansen's uh, we talk Lars Bohansen's terms as right. Lars Bo gave them. But yeah, but I think uh, I think if I understand correctly, so you mean it's not only that they are strong in openings and they are um, standard structures, but also in the middle game, if they know the pawn structures and know the plans, uh, then theorists are normally very good. And this would be, I think, a very good example for it. It's a very classical pawn structure, very typical, and I think that. That is very good for a, a theorist and not so good for an activist like Tal, who, who does not really have any attack at all at the moment. So I, I think you're right. Yes. Uh -huh. Got it. Okay. So here, uh, 
he went rook, rook c4. c4. Objectively, it's bad, but it's a typical activist mistake. I have made many such mistakes in my <laughs> games as well. As activists, you just go forward and don't care too much about the act, uh, objective value mm. of the move. Right. Okay. Uh, then um, rook fc1 is... Rock, yeah, rock AC. Uh, yeah, white played rock FC one. It's okay. Uh, rock AC eight is another mistake. But if you if it's you you play it when you're activist. Right. <laughs> and now Botvinnik starts to drift, which is very difficult when you play against uh, hyper activists. Mm. Now uh, the computer claims that black is more or less busted in the higher sense. After uh, shall the viewers uh, shall the viewers find it? Or? Okay, guys. Can you find what should white do in this position? White to move. Not an easy position. Actually. No, but black must be white must be simply better because space advantage and in a way black's minor pieces are, you know, makes my, black's minor pieces are bad mm. at the moment. Right. Okay. Uh, Priyanshu Kumar says, what's the plan with Rook C4? He doesn't understand why did Tal go there? Well, uh, I think, sorry, you can go ahead. <laughs> okay. Um, well, the plan is just to put the pieces on active squares and then hope that at some point there might be a tactical blow or something. Mm. But uh, it's, you're right, in the moment, there is no real threats for Black. He just tries to, to be as active as possible and then hope for some tactical chances at some point. Typical activist behavior. You can also look at one of my, many, many of my games where I made many similar mistakes. But uh, of course, the opponents didn't always exploit these mistakes like what Vinik didn't hear. Mm, true. Okay. Uh, Paras Boyd says Bishop F1. Alston Boas says BD2. So BD Bishop F1 is also a very strong move. Bishop F1 is a strong move, better than the game continuation, but not the. But, but Bishop F1 is a good move. He can he can play it. I would give points to him. Mm -hmm. But there is a, a one move uh, for. Bishop F1 is the second move in a, in a way. <laughs> right. Okay. So Anshuman, Mira, all of you, Bishop F1 makes a lot of sense. Arnav yeah. Vasan says A3. Yeah. A3 is even better. A3 is a better realization. And only after Queen A5, then Bishop F1. And if Queen B3 comes here, then just... Queen A5. Ah, yeah. yeah. If Queen A5, then Bishop F1. And if, and if uh, Queen B3, then um, Bishop takes A7. And well, we don't have compensation for that one. Hmm. We just okay. lost the ball. But in the game, like let's say instead of here, can can you snatch this pawn or it's very risky? The bishop gets trapped, yes, after b6. This looks uh, risky. Very Yeah, I think I think Carsten, I remember that we also discussed the position. And I think now after b6, uh, you just lose the bishop because now after a3, there's queen a5. Hmm. And after queen. And, okay. Okay, and after queen e3. Now? Okay. Yeah. Can I maybe put a rook to c5 or d4? I'm, I'm not sure, but it looks like the bishop is trapped. But I'm not, not sure. N now maybe now there's... there is b4 in the end. Yeah, I, I, I also realized. Yeah, I, I don't know. It's difficult. Mm, maybe rook d4 then. Okay. But then knight e2 stuff. Yeah, this still is not so knight e2. But, but okay, here maybe so you easy. win two pieces for a rook, right? After queen a5, at the very least. Okay. Or but take, still, take and rook c1. Yeah. yeah, still some calculation needed. Yeah, take on c8 and rook c1. So it's still. Mm -hmm. still not so, not so easy yeah but I, I think at least we can say it's definitely better to include a3 queen b3 right because after that like bishop a7 b6 now there's queen c2 i think mm. yeah and black has to exchange queens and then the b6 pawn will also be lost uh, right. so that would be much better now got it okay wonderful and and for the other line of course a lot of calculation would be needed while here uh, not of course another advantage if you are not a concrete player if you are an intuitive player you don't want to calculate so deeply right 
right absolutely okay so king h2 by botvinnik not the best it's not so good it's just to botvinnik i guess thinks he's better he must be better because he has space advantage and he has all the time in the world and this is right and wrong as we will see mm -hmm. And Tal, of course, goes f5, uh, very aggressive move, takes bishop f5. So long term, white is better. He has the e4 square here, but short term, the rook is attacked. Okay, so rook a1. Rook a1. And now comes, of course, one of the most famous moves of chess history. But yeah, white is better here. Mm -hmm. Nothing can change that. But uh, Tal, of course, had to had to do it hyperactivist mode he had to switch on his okay. yeah yeah they are, they are correct sacrifices and mine <laughs> no so guys what does black do in this position yes everyone i think either knows the game or I, everyone in the chat is the hyperactivist so mira tripathi <laughs> yao milkov nishant varma shubhdeep das paras bohir shreyas karthik knight f4 yeah fantastic but in a way to back to your old question i think it is a bit easier to learn the hyperactivist style or to play these moves even when you are not hyperactivist mm. i think that is easier than to learn the reflector qualities but okay, this don't can don't be you think, Don't you think that Tal is loved by everyone as a player because it's easier to understand or be like a hyperactivist and players like Karpov, Capablanca, uh, Carlson even are not really appreciated as much in their playing style, not achievements, but... Yes, this was what Rudolf Spielmann wrote, wrote of course, in his famous book uh, that... Uh, we all, I don't, I don't know the word verbatim quote, and it's also not too, too important, but we all uh, admire Capablanca, but our hearts beat higher when we look at Morphe's games. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. Okay, so knight f4, and people say that this is this may not be the best move, but Tal played it, right? Is that true? It, it's not. It's definitely not the best move. It, in correspondence games, you shouldn't play it because it's a losing move. It's losing but uh, objectively mm. but practically over the board in this moment it was by far the best move i'm sure right if tal would have played the computer move knight f6 he would most likely have lost and botvinnik would have loved to play the position while now the price of every move is extremely high right he takes it Pawn takes yeah it. White, white must move uh, white must find now a serious a very long series of only moves in order to win and very deep only moves Mm -hmm. Okay. This is a surprise when you when you play moves like King H2 against hyper activists, you often have to pray this prize. You might be winning, but you have to find 10 or 20 consecutive difficult only moves. And you may find them or you may not. Right. Yeah, and I think we also made the exercise and I failed to find the correct defense. So if you find it, you are better than than uh, I was at the moment. So okay. and yeah, better I think it's, it's very difficult. <laughs> so guys, and white better players. than famous uh, Soviet world champion Mikhail Moiseyevich Botvinnik. Hmm. So your chance to be better than many great players. What does White do in this position? So according to you, who are the players who can really battle the hyperactivists well? Re strong reflectors. Strong reflect. Ah. I mean, like reflectors Magnus can uh, battle everyone well, right? In a way. But for, for hyperactivists, uh, they are deadly. Or for activists, they can be deadly opponents. Like Magnus Carlsen in his matches against uh, Arnand or mm. yeah, Karpov. And what about in... Korchnoi? What is his style? Pragmatic. So then wouldn't pragmatic also be difficult for hyperactivists? Like Korchnoi had a very big plus score against Tal. Yeah, yeah, I think so, because uh, hyperactivists often are basing their sacrifices on intuition and strong pragmatics can just calculate all the lines till the end. And uh, it's like in this position, if you find uh, all the way, then you're winning with white. Mm. And that's what strong pragmatics are very good in, uh, just to calculate lines. So yeah, I think it's, it's also uh, annoying for hyperactivists to play against pragmatics for sure. Right, got it. Very well explained. So we have two moves mm -hmm. here. Paras Boer, Alston Boas, and Pranshu Gupta say BD2, while 
sorry, no, a unity x, y, z says B D two. Paras Bhoer and Surya Thangavel says A three, and Shubhadeep Das says A three. A three is winning. Okay, if, uh, if I go queen B three, that's like bishop takes A seven. Yeah, Thank you. Bishop E five. And now comes yeah. another big moment. Now comes another very big moment. What is now the only move for white to get an advantage? What is white? White only, yeah, has okay. only one move. White to play, guys. What do you do? What's the only move? For an advantage. Mm. For a white advantage. Harsh Thakur asks, is Fabi pragmatic? Yes. Mm. Definitely. And yeah, and most most uh, Magnus Carlsen is a reflector, and then most players of the world are pragmatics mm. for some reason. Nishant Verma has interesting suggestion here. He says chess terminology is reflective, reflector, activist, pragmatic. Boxing terminology is boxer, puncher, and slugger. I don't know if <laughs> that. I, I don't know much about boxing. <laughs> Me I, <laughs> I don't know. And by the way, the model, the model for business, uh, John Marie Hetrop had developed this model for business managers, and there it had worked very well. So it is copied not from boxing, but from business managing. Got it. But of course, we could potentially try to copy it to boxing or to other activities. This might work or might not work. I. It, it has to be some psychologist has to look at it right got it okay so shubhdeep shrijan aradhya manan shaibi bino jeel patel manthan khause everyone has said f3 f3 is the only move they are all right oh. f3 but, but is then, i would uh, play this i think it's like i would look at my bishop and i would say why not bishop f3 this might be the reason why botvinik missed it. And now black, of course, plays b6, and then comes the big moment. What is now the only move? But you see, you have to find several consecutive only moves to refute Tal's incorrect sacrifice. Ah. Or maybe maybe uh, b6, or we start with rook 8. Uh, instead of b6, rook, what? Uh, Bishop f3, rook 8, maybe? And, and f, 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 uh, f, uh, f3, not bishop f3. Ah, sorry, not f3, bishop f3, f3, b6, and now only move, okay. Yeah, for white. this was, yeah. So threat is rook 8 or rook c7. So guys, Yeah, and white has only one move to parry all this, this and to get an advantage. What should white play here? Um, guys, white right to play. People want to go queen d1 here. Uh, this is what Tal had suggested in his old analysis, but this would be, uh, yeah, this had Misha Tal had given, but this would only be a draw after queen takes. Uh, you win the queen, but not uh, this amazing, yeah. You win the queen, but black is so active that you won't be able to win the game, yeah. Rook a2 and rook takes c3. Ooh. And now black is so active that it compensates. C1. Rook takes uh, c1, queen d2, uh, bishop takes b2, and uh, queen takes, uh, and rook b1, and it's a draw. Amazing. Yeah? Like, <laughs> I think this king is in big trouble and white has to go for perpetual. Yeah, it's, it's a draw here, yes. Mm. So it's, it's not a mistake in there, in the, but it's only a draw. Okay. So, and this is what Tal had given in the old days, by the way. I say, I don't know who found this move. Maybe it, I, I, in the first publication, I know is Kasparov's book on my great predecessors. But no one found it yet. No one found it. Maybe no, no one. I don't know. But I don't know if anyone has. So you can see how difficult it is to refute this wrong right. sacrifices. So in a way, hyper, uh, hyper activist, they know sometimes that they are going wrong, but they believe in themselves that, you know, opponent will not find it. When yeah, you play, exactly. 
when you played against Tal, this is, you know, glass, this is, he, he, no, excuse me, this is, he, he had no dexter and his self-confidence and his feeling that he could sacrifice everything and win never and break, he, he could break unbreakable walls. True, true. Okay. It also has a psychological component, definitely. Lars Johan Brodkorp has found it. He says A4. And then I resign. A4 is winning. I resign. White is winning. But I think the line is not over yet, right? If no. Black plays rook to c7. Because now at, at least knight b5 is not working. But I think now there is... Uh, rook a3. I, I think rook a3. Yeah, right. Queen b4? Knight a2. Ooh. Yeah, and now whatever happens, there is something hanging in. Okay. Now yeah. we are overloaded, finally. Right. Wow. Finally, it's refuted. Right. But over the board to find all these moves and against Tal and this psychology and he's always staring at you with his confidence. <laughs> true, true. <laughs> yes, a lot of elements to chess, yeah, apart from just over the board, also off the board things. Definitely. So Bishop D2 was played in the game by... Which was a mistake. And now Tal make a mis made a mistake himself. Very seldom. Here, usually these here, hyperactivists have a very good feeling for the dynamics. And here is a very seldom moment that Tal makes a dynamic mistake. The viewers with Black, what should Black play? What do the uh, viewers um, think? Guys, what should Black do here? Try to figure out... Um... Mira says Kasparov said in his book Tal had a hypnotic glare. Yeah, yes. Sure. Korchnoi even, or somebody even played with Tal. Uh, what did he use? Sunglasses. Ah, sunglasses. Okay, the move. Uh, Jeel Patel, Paras Boer, Harsh Thakur, Abhishek K, Priyanshu Kumar, and all of them say Bishop E5. They are all right. Nice. Bishop E5, F3, Queen takes B, only now Queen takes B2, Knight D1, and Queen takes A1. And yeah, you take, I take, and yeah, and the position from another universe comes up which is a, a dynamically balanced according to the computer. But a position from another universe, yeah? But if you do the same thing, knight, uh, and now knight d1, or maybe not, rook, here, rook a d1, yes? Rook a b1. Rook a b1 is easier. Hmm. Yeah. This is just uh, winning for white. Yeah. F3, and now Botvinnik made a big, 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 big mistake. What should black do here? If I do here, white to play. I mean, this is hanging, of course. Uh, but Tal realized that if he would have taken directly, then rook b one. So he first decided to interpose with. F3. Yeah, material is not for hyperactivist. Material is not a very important factor of the position of the evaluation of the position. It's more important is king attack, dynamics, activity. Hmm. By the way, while they are thinking, Derek Williams has a question. Is it normal for people to enjoy the games most that aren't their style? Example, I might be an activist, but I enjoy reflector games more. Mm, it's, I have to say if it's normal, but I think that you definitely can learn more yourself. So I, I can learn much more from Carlson's games, for example. And other player types but i think what what you prefer and in, in terms of like what is interesting to you is just a personal decision so i i also like like it more to see activist games or pragmatic games um and not so much for example theorist games although i'm not a theorist so i think it, it cannot be said like that general way hmm. yeah it definitely cannot be said in general but i would make an educated guess that most players enjoy games by Morphe, Tal, and other hyperactivists or activists most. This is just an educated guess, and it doesn't mean where you can learn the most. It's just there is the most entertainment value in certain way of looking at it. 
Right. I think by all these discussions, I have realized that I am not an activist. Like I, I don't enjoy the games of Morphe, Alekhine and all. I mean, I love them, but I enjoy games of Smyslow, Capablanca and Carpo and all those little moves much more. Uh, I, I also think that you are not an activist, but Soya is an activist. Hmm. Okay. So, by the way, uh, Queen e7 is one suggestion, Rook b2 is one suggestion, and Bishop takes f3, Jeel Patel, Abhishek K. They say Bishop, Bishop takes f3 is right. Uh, Bishop takes b1, Rook takes b1, White is winning. Queen c2. White is now winning in several ways, but Floor found a very nice uh, activist style win, but White is winning in several ways here. Yeah. Hmm. Floor uh, found a very good move for White, but guys, try to think what is White's best move here. Yeah, and White is winning in many, many ways. Floor just found an activist solution. Luis, you said that you you are a pragmatist, right? Yeah, I think so. And was there a reason why, like, let's say you trained with Kasten, uh, so generally, you know, like a trainer can uh, kind of transmit his qualities, but maybe your style was already built up before that, or? Um. Yeah, I I never really thought about it. I I think I think yes, but I think I also. Uh, changed my style a lot in the last years um i i'm not sure how but i think also that of course some influence came from my trainer came from carsten for example but yeah it's 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 tough to say because uh carsten and i don't have the same style so it's it, it cannot be, be said like that uh, i think it just comes with with training and uh, maybe if you play games and see ah, okay there are my my mistakes i have to work on that and yeah that's the way you you can change your own style got it uh, do you and of course usually you will get more uh, the more experience you have the more uni universal you will get usually right but do you think uh, that if the trainer and the student have same styles then that helps or that's not the case well if it, if it helps it's tough to say but it's definitely so that then they will they will not change their style because if they train also with a person that shares the same style, they will just keep it. Mm. But if, if it's good, I, I would, I would even say it's probably not so good because then you, you cannot keep the focus on your weaknesses, which might be more important than always working on your strength. But uh, it's like, like always, it cannot be really sad in general. I say. Very nice. Yeah, sure. Yeah. In general, of course it can't be sad. Mm. But it can help if the trainer and students have different styles. It can also have big advantages. You have then many things to discuss about and the student can then has other views and so on. So it's like Peter, Peter Leko training. Peter Leko is serious training with reflector Vincent Keimer. This can help, for mm. example. So I, yeah, I, it might, uh, uh, yeah. And, and uh, uh, Peter Heine Nielsen, who is serious, trains or is the second of Magnus Carlsen as reflector. So I think it, might have something to have different styles if the combination fits in a way. Right. Got it. By the way, uh, Surya Thangavel has given a variation. Bishop e4, rook e4, queen e4, queen d2, and queen e6. Yeah. Um, um, uh, Bishop e4 is right, is floor suggestion. Rook takes e4, but now uh, knight takes e4. Uh -huh. And queen b1. Knight b1 and knight takes d6. Typical activist solution. And now this check is threatened. Rook yeah. is hanging. And yeah. white wins. Yeah. Floors. This is floors. It's not the only way to win. This is floors way to win. Got it. But Botwinik went wrong and he took on b2. Big mistake. And then after f 2 Black is winning. It's amazing, yeah. Black has white has a rook and a piece, but black is completely winning. Amazing. Yeah. How tall does this? Amazing. Yeah, but I also have to say, it's I would say it's a typical human mistake to just uh, try to reduce the pressure if you exchange queens and and get material off the board. It's very typical for humans, but yeah, it's it's not not always uh, so good. But I, I think it's a very human mistake. It's very understandable, 
Uh, but but still, these are the moments where you might even think more about your solution because, uh, like in this position, it was completely wrong to exchange the queens here. Mm, true, yeah, because I think it fails very concretely after check king g one, and now. Now comes another, now one moment. Here Tal could have won much more beautifully than Tal's move wins as well. But here Tal could have won directly in Tal's style. Okay, so guys, black to play, what would you do? And while they think, uh, Derek asks that, just wanted to follow up, Engel cut got cut on a critical part of his answers about enjoying games of those not your style. He said you learn from... Or learn more from what kind of games he i think that part uh, he couldn't hear or maybe it got cut so if you could uh, tell him that you learn I'll, I'll question you learn more from what kind of games like for yourself um i i learn more from the games that i that is not my my own style or where i'm i'm weak for example like from carlson's games so i'm not a reflector at all I, I really want to to have the strength of a reflector, but uh, it's very tough to learn. And I think from from that games, I, I learn much more than, for example, from activist games or from uh, pragmatic games. Got it. Uh, I have, I like, we'll come to that question. By the way, here the answer suggested by Deva Priya Manna. Many of them want to go Rook D1, but Deva Priya Pranshu, Priyanshu and Siddharth, they want to play Rook take C3. But a lot of people want to go Rook D1. But Rook D1, can't it be just taken? It's Rook takes, yeah. Yeah, this, this should be bad. And now probably take and Rook C1 was the idea, I guess. Yeah, but then Bishop, no, Rook, what do you do? Because well, Bishop F3, then Bishop C2, right? Okay, but still, even that is not completely clear. Yeah, bishop. Uh, uh. But can I can I go bishop f three, bishop c two, and then bishop d two maybe? Hmm. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. This looks interesting. Ah, yeah, but you can still play rook a one, right? Yeah, it's not so clear. Bishop. Tough. Rook bishops. D7, bishop D1. Yeah, or bishop C, bishop C3, but of course. Yeah. Oh, but then just take, take. But the rook end game. Oh, okay. Yeah, but that's not. Maybe instead of bishop C3, I can just take on B7. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And try to hold that. Probably black is still better, but it's not one directly. Now king G2, for example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, yeah. And now black is better, I think. Um, but I don't know, bishop h6, maybe yeah. there's a lot of counterplay still going true, on. True, there's a lot uh, to work here for white, uh, for black. So the right move is rook takes c3. Wow. So you can't take with nice. the bishop because rook d1, right? So rook bc3 is the most natural. And only now rook d1. And now it's over. Rook c4 and should be two. Wow. Beautiful. Plus five. Game over. It's yeah. The other variation might also be not bad, but this is completely game over. Hmm. Amazing. Really typical tile solution. Yeah. But pawn e2 for the rook, but the pawn e2 is uh, is the winner. Right. So in the game he went uh, bishop f4. But... Okay, but then we don't. Yeah, he went bishop f4 and then yes, and one is also win. It's also winning and one then after some further moves. But um, yeah, yeah, we could uh, end sure. the game here if. Yeah. Okay, which game should we go next? And is Zoya? Uh, yes. Is Zoya already there or? No, he will join in eighteen minutes. Okay, then we could look at the prag at Lu at what Lewis uh, Lewis uh, example from the pragmatic. Uh, Chapter would be uh, which one should we look at? One moment. Um... There's a question by Harsh Thakur who says players like MVL who can be very good at defense when needed. What kind are they? Pragmatics. They are also pragmatic. Right. Yeah. Pragmatics. Let, let's. Yeah. Pra MVL is a typical pragmatic. 
So let's look at Ponomario of Caruana, which was um, annotated by Lewis from the Pragmatic chapter. Pragmatic world champions are Fischer, Ove, and Lasker. Other famous pragmatics are Coach Schnoy, Caruana, Dingley Wren, Kayaki in MVL, Lewis Engel, and Alpha Beta computer engines. Hmm. And now Lewis can take over. Okay, so yeah, now the pragmatics, and we already said pragmatics are very good in calculating lines and um, yeah, of, of course, all the top players are good in it, but there are some players that are really basing almost all their decisions, not on intuition, but on um, just calculating the lines till the end. And yeah, I think the most famous examples uh, for us are Caruana and MVL, and this game is from Caruana. Mm. And here he is black and he's an exchange up, but right now there are some serious concrete problems with the rook on B4. And yeah, maybe... There's already like the first critical moment right now. Um, okay. what, what should Blake do with his rook? Or where should he put the rook to? Okay. So maybe if the chat wants to yeah, guess sure. uh, right now, we could make a short break and yes. yeah, see. Yes. Guys, what should Black do over here? And you know, every time we they are thinking, there's always one or two people who have like questions on what player falls in what category. So the new question is, Sultan Khan, where does he fit in? Because <laughs> he was uh, quite a well-known chess player, but I mean, during when Capablanca and maybe first strong player from Asia, perhaps. Well, I, um, I, I didn't study his game, so I, I, I cannot say anything about it. Okay, cool. <clears throat> So guys, what? Alston Boas says Rook B6 in this position. Yeah, Rook, Rook B6 is a candidate, but then White could play Bishop to D4 and there's again the problem where to put the Rook and here probably the best is to, to return to B4 because there is just no other square and then Bishop C3 and, and again there's a the question hmm. what to do oh, here with Black because... Yeah, of it course. would also be a pragmatic behavior, by the way. You could you could just play it, try it, and then try again. Yeah. Surya Thangavel and Saugata both say Rook E4. Rook B E4. Yes. Yeah, that's right. That's I think also the, the most logical move. And it looks like like Black has consolidated, but in fact he still has serious concrete problems to solve because White plays Bishop B5 now. Mm -hmm. And again, it's it's I think it's the next the next concrete question what to do here because the rook on e8 is hanging. Right. And if it moves somewhere, maybe white could take on f6, and then the e4 rook is also hanging, and there are also back rank problems. So it's it's still not over at all here. And yeah, maybe so guys, directly next next question what, what to do here with black. What should black do in this position? Again, uh for Nomario making Karuana's life difficult here. Uh, Anish Giri is one of the favorites of everyone. So, what is his style like? He is a theorist. Theorist. Yes, definitely. He's uh, the only theorist among the world's top ten at the moment. He knows his opening inside out. He knows Dvoretsky's endgame manual by heart. Yeah, he made endgame training with me. I can confirm that. So, yeah. and he he knows his structures inside out. Uh, yeah, he is a typical theorist. He's the only theorist in top 10? At the moment. Wow. But how, how, why? But, you know, like, uh, why just one theorist? And there would be many pragmatic, many activists. Is there a reason? Maybe modern, modern computer times favor pragmatics. Because the computers are also pragmatic. You can uh, then uh, make a better opening preparation, sweeter to the comes to the strengths of the pragmatics, then there are more sporting reasons. You don't have adjourned games anymore. You play two rounds, one, one per day. You uh, have to be pragmatic in many respects. So this might help. Pre but okay, this answer, well, who, who knows? It, it, may, it, it may explain it or may not. True. Okay. But modern times might favor pragmatics. That might be one point. 
Right. By the way, Lars Bohansen had predicted in his book in 2005 that there would be more and more activists in the top 10, but his prediction didn't come true. It more and more pragmatics came to the top 10. Right, right. Okay, so few of the suggestions here are Rook 8 E2, G6, and uh, sorry, Rook 8 E7 and G6. But after G6, <laughs> the knight is hanging. Right, so this cannot be good. Yeah, that's not working. And I think Rook 8 E7 looks like a logical move, but now there's Bishop D3. Yes. And suddenly black has problems with this other rook, and there's not really any any good square for it. That was the and point of the move bishop uh, b5 first and not bishop d3 immediately to misplace the rook. Mm. Because uh, yeah, I mean if the most natural one here, queen c8, then we can go knight e8 and we should be okay. Yeah, right. So, so if black consolidates, he's almost winning with this uh, exchange up, but bishop d3 is a very strong move here. Right. So bishop d3. So that's why the right move here and has been mentioned by one person, Shubdeep Das, and he says queen to c5. Yeah, that's right. I think it's very difficult to see here, just a counterattack on both of white's bishops. And you have to calculate a lot to, to make it work, but it's the best move here. And actually now um, white made a mistake himself. He it's still here. not not already completely losing right bishop takes f6 looks like a very a normal intermediate move but in fact it's a mistake and it would be better here to play uh, bishop takes e8 with white and now black plays queen takes c3 mm -hmm. bishop to b5 yeah um, back and now a very important intermediate move g6 yes. to, to make some some air for the king the queen has to go to g5 and now black will win one pawn with rook e1 check it's all pretty forced. I, I, I'm sure Karana had seen it, um, but it's still a long line to calculate. Take, take, king to g2, uh, queen e4 check, uh, king goes to h2, for example, or g1, doesn't matter. And now black can take on d5 finally, and he is a pawn up and, and should be clearly better, but it's still not winning. Right. But it's it is also it's 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 a good good example for, for how far they can calculate these pragmatics. So even Karana, I'm sure he had seen all this, but it's yeah, still a sure. very, very long sure. line to calculate. Right. So uh, he would have been pawn up. Uh, it's still not like totally winning, but black has great chances. Uh, but in the game, he took on f6 and now black to move. Yeah, and there are again a, a few options to calculate, but only one move that's winning for black. Okay, guys, can you think... What is the winning move here for black? And people, Aryan Philip asks, what about Ali Reza Firuja? Good question. I have to go there in more depths. I have looked already a bit. I think he has at least activist uh, qualities. Yeah, yeah, he has good activist qualities. Not pragmatist also because he's very good Yeah, at uh, also. defense. Also, this it's, sometimes it's indeed a bit difficult to, to, to decide between activists and pragmatics. Some players are in a way bo both. This also, by the way, Hansen classifies also Spassky and uh, Spassky as um, pragmatic. We classified him as activist. And yeah, okay, uh, so, but, but okay, he's, uh, he's activist or pragmatic. Ali Reza is activist or pragmatic. Yeah. You, you would say that activists and pragmatics both calculate well but activists might sometimes go for unclear sacrifices or inferior moves but pragmatists would never do that yes yeah well maybe i would not say that they would never do that but at least they don't like to do it if they cannot calculate till the end right. so they they do not like to to play intuitive sacrifices but if it's concretely working then of course they will sacrifice material as a, as a journalist, I would say that a pragmatist after uh, playing an incorrect sacrifice in a post-game interview would be not very happy, but an activist would be very happy at that victory, you know, something like yeah, that. Sure. <laughs> for sure. For absolutely right. Tal often was beaming with, with his confidence and with his, with his pleasure. They are correct sacrifices and mine. Right, right. Okay, a lot of people should deep. Kritik, uh, 
Aradhya Shreyas account number two. Rook E1 check is what they want to play. Yeah, very nice. So not taking either of uh, White's bishops, but to give an intermediate check on E1 is the right move. Um, but it's still not over because White found a nice nice move. He didn't take on E1, but instead, yeah, right, he played King to H2. So, just so one, to, to one keep is that if you instead of rookie one, if you take on b5, then this is winning. Yes, right. So it's it's over here. Um that's not how, how black can play, it's it's made. But g takes f6 also not, not so good because the e8 rook is hanging. Right. And yeah, that is why the, the check on e1 is so good for black. So if and now, now you take take then king h2, then you can take, and their rook on e8 is no longer hanging. Yeah, right. And and black is winning here. And that's why white played king h2 directly. Mm. And now next critical moment. So you see, it's every move you have to calculate a lot. And I, I would say now is the, probably the last critical moment of the game. And again, there's one clear way to, to win with black here. But it's still not so easy because there, there are still a few options here for black. Okay, guys, black to play. What do you, what would you do? So uh, while people think, there's always this uh, thing that people want to know that Magnus being a reflector, uh, who would be the toughest opponent for him? You know, judging like six of the eight players in the candidates are already selected uh, in terms of playing style. Very, very tough to say because Carlsen is so strong and he also has other qualities as well. Um, I... I, I would I would guess maybe even a theorist if he gets his his typical structures and and positions, but uh, it, I, I cannot I can't really say it. I, th I think uh, whatever uh, who it who it will be, Carlsen is always probably a clear favorite uh, in the match. So there is not really one opponent that would Carlsen would be unhappy with. I'm I'm I think yeah, it's tough to say. But indeed, Anish might be Anish Giri, who is the only serious, of course, in coming into consideration at the moment. Anish Giri might be an interesting opponent, mm. but of course, Anish must qualify first. Right, right. He has uh, to play well in the Grand Prix. And what about uh, Rajabov? Is an active is definitely an activist, and would be an interesting opponent for Magnus. But Magnus would be favorite, of course. Mm. True. Okay, uh, so g takes f6 is one, rook takes d1 by Yao Milikov, and g6 by Pranshu Kumar. Hmm. Yeah, okay, I, I think g takes f6 and rook takes d1 are the most natural moves. I think g6 doesn't look very good because now I can at least just, yeah, maybe or just take on e1 and I still have two bishops True. and yeah it's it's just and material up here for white queen f4 and there's queen b8 uh, threat right. so but queen ah uh, queen takes b5 and queen h6 yeah very uh, yeah, very right nice. very nice very nice because now f2 is not hanging yeah these pragmatics they can right. calculate very well you can't easily out calculate them <laughs> True. <laughs> True. yeah but but the right move instead is to, to take on d1 with the rook instead of g6 and now bishop takes e8, so at some point white has to get some material back. And now, yeah, I would say now it's really the last move of the game because you could take on f6, but it's not so good. Um, because of the g takes f6, there's queen g4 check and the rook on d1 is hanging. Right. So that would be not so good. But of course, Kawana had, had seen all this and here he can take in between on d5 with the rook. Wow. And now there's still the bishop on f6 hanging and yeah black black just wins there's there's no move for white here uh, to go bishop e5 and now rook e5 yeah queen f7 and it's just exchange up there's no back rank mate and i think we can we can skip, skip the rest of the game because now we won very easily um yeah but i, I think a very good example on how how these guys can calculate because it was Tremendous. really tough all all the way and I'm sure he had seen all this. It's yeah, it's very tremendous. Very nice, very nice. So uh, we have like a couple of minutes more before Surya joins. 
is it possible to have a look at what like a small example on what a theorist is like small example is always a bit um <laughs> <laughs> we we it, we can we as uh, it's not so small but we could be quick then we go to the game of um, Steinitz uh, of uh, English against Steinitz okay just so that uh, everyone knows what a th I mean we've spoken a lot about a theorist but <clears throat> world champions are Steinitz Botvinnik and Kramnik and other famous players are Taras Nimtsovich, who has written a book, My System. This must be a serious. Peter Leko, mm -hmm. Anish Giri, uh, Georg Meyer, Ulf Anderson, Nikola Zetlak, Sergei Tifjakov, Ruslan Ponomayov, Hans Berliner, Russla, um, Vic, Matthias Waltz, Viktor Moskalenko, Mark Dvoretsky, mm -hmm. um, Josef Dorfmann, The Method in Chess. Must be a serious, of course. What, the what stops you from putting Kramnik in a reflector as opposed to theorist? Um, he also has reflector qualities, of course, but I think he is more, he works on, he, he and he, Kramnik made a change, of course, in the later um, years, yeah, in the, in the last few years of his career, he even became an activist and a hyperactivist in the Berlin tournament, for example, yes. but yeah. let's, let's take the Kasparov match in London 2000, he had a look at the Berlin opening, and uh, he made the system openings um, and looked deeply at the structures and under understood them very deeply, like the bishop pair in the Berlin. So I think uh, he understands pawn structure very deeply. He knows the theoretical end games very well. So I, I think his, his, the serious qualities are even higher than his reflector qualities, I Got think. Very, very nice. Okay, but I, I am. Um, but Hansen, uh, uh, this all already comes from Lars Bo uh, Hansen. In a way, you could I could also say it is copied from Lars Bo Hansen. Mm. Right. Okay. <clears throat> so this game, uh, black typical uh, double bishop advantage. So like a a theorist would love such. Love position. to have it. Yeah, theorists like. Um, uh, the pawn, uh, pawn question and pawn structure question. And when you have the bishop pair or bishop against knight, these pawn structure questions come to the forefront very strongly. And so often many theorists are very good at handling these business like a bishop pair advantage. Hmm. It's a typical theorist advantage. Like also Kramnik in the Berlin opening against Kasparov. Right. So rook a d8, c4, yeah. knight yeah. f8, threatening rook takes e3. Knight b3. b6, of course, a typical move to restrict both minor pieces at the same uh, time. Um, right. h3, bishop e6. And now comes a big moment. What must white play? This, of course, is again the defensive question. What must uh, white play? It's a very, very big moment. If white makes a mistake here, it's next to impossible to hold. Oh, okay. Guys, white to play. What do you do? Hmm. Knight d4 says critic Gujarat. Yeah. Yes, very good, very good. Because bad knights are often a nightmare. Yeah, the knight must uh, must move away from the bad. This is right. And now black is better. That's absolutely clear. But it's still a game. Hmm. So we we could go on, but here it's not so it's not so clear. I couldn't say black must be winning. Black has practical winning chances, but not more. In the game move was a big mistake. Rook fd1, very big mistake. Because now after c5, white might be strategically, strategically uh, losing. Yeah, strategically losing. Right. And uh, yeah, I mean, he has a very good position. So bishop g5, f6, king f7. Yeah, typical Steinitz move, of course. Steinitz always liked the Steinitz king, but in the end game, the king should indeed be activated. True. Bishop e3. But we can see here, not all theories of the theorists were good. For example, Steinitz theory that a king can defend itself and should be activated already in the opening if, if it works out, didn't yes. work out. Yes. So not all theories of all theorists are good. It might be even one secret of the game of chess that more that the very general theories are all not really very convincing mm, mm. 
there are also these theories that you should maximize your own mobility or, or you should maximize the difference between your own, the own number of moves and any number of moves. You can all do that, but you wouldn't be a very strong player. Right. Because chess is too difficult for, for these easy theories. Right. And maybe in the olden days, theorists were many. But I think uh, as the modern computers keep evolving, uh, theorists uh, cannot have these uh, fixed ideas. This was your question about why there are not so many theorists in the top 10 or so on. It might have to do something with that, that the modern times favor the pragmatics due to the computers. Tremendous. Okay. Uh, and rookie one and now F5. Yeah, F5, by the way, F5 was the first move where you have to think a bit more. Until now, all black pawn moves were cheap moves. Okay, all pawn moves weaken squares, that's clear. But as Bobby famously said, uh, to get squares, you got to give squares, a typical pragmatic attitude, yeah. Um, for, for, until here, all black pawn moves were not were okay. Yeah, no, no pro problematic. They were not re weakening really problematic squares. But f5 is the first move which weakens e5, which might be a problem. Yeah, from a principal point right. of view. So here, Shinitz had to be sure that this weakness cannot be exploited, mm -hmm. and it can't be exploited. Right. So he played f5, and one second while he go through this game, we have our guest who has joined in as well so welcome him here hello surya uh hi can you hear me yes we can hear you but we can't see you yeah yeah hang on hang on <laughs> sorry Just give me two minutes and I'll sit and I'll be there. Okay, okay. So while he fixes his camera and... Yeah, so white, uh, yeah, F5. we can, white uh, must play F4, otherwise black will play F4 and the space advantage will become overwhelming. Um, Bishop F6, and now comes a mistake White should, of course, play knight d2 because the knight is the biggest problem. The verse plays peace and must come to greener pastures. White must play knight d2 here. And then black is, yeah, black is very good, but it's still not, it's still a game. Yes, he went g3. Which was another mistake. But now he can do knight d2, no? Oh, and then the a2, a2 is, then the, this time the a2 would hang for real. Ah, because a pawn is because here if you took uh, a two instead of g three, then rook a one loses the yeah. e seven. Pawn. Yeah, yeah, then then it wouldn't be good to take the a two, of course. Right, got it. Okay, so g three, a five. Ah, a five is bad. theorists are very good at these pawn structure questions, and the undermining a five, a four, a three is typical such motive, and theorists all know such motives by heart. All all these motives they know by heart. Mm. Okay. Uh, by the way, uh, guys, Surya is here, and Surya, please uh, do meet uh, Carsten Mueller and Louis Hello, Engel. Hello, Hey, Louis. Hi. Hi. Hello, Surya. Congratulations to your birthday yesterday, and many thanks for joining in after the birthday party. Thank you. I'm very excited. I would. Um, I'm eager to learn something today. Yeah. So, uh, Surya, as you know, uh, Carsten is one of the most well-known and prolific authors and a great endgame expert and mathematician and many things. Uh, Louis is a very talented youngster from Germany who is 20 years old, 19, and already 19, a yeah. grandmaster. Um, and uh, I mean, uh, Kasten and Louis, uh, Surya needs no introduction. He is one of India's top grandmasters, has been a second to Vichy for three world championship matches with the highest rating of 26 80 plus so it's it's a great uh, uh, meet here we have with uh, three wonderful personalities okay then i would suggest to finish this dynets part first and then to go to uh, zuria's games or sure uh, i just okay. uh, want surya we'll we'll have a look at this game and then i wanted to ask you your thoughts on uh, a few questions. Let's so let's finish this. 
Okay, after a5, white ma the only defense for white is knight c1, only move. Otherwise, he will blow, be blown up. Um, a4 and a3 is only move. Yes. This undermining must be stopped. Otherwise. Um, yeah, now let's just go on. Bishop c4 is not the best move, but uh, of course it was the game. And king f2 is another mistake. And here comes a big moment. Black can win in many ways, but according to modern computers, Steinitz way is amazingly Steinitz solution is best. It's really amazing. How to make progress here with uh, Black? Okay. Surya, have you seen this game? Yes, this is Steinitz game. I remember, but I don't remember this exact point. Okay, great. So Surya can also think. And also, guys, in the chat, Black to play here, what would you do? So I see everything in your Zoom chat, right? Sorry, I I see everything in Zoom, right? Yes, in yes. Your Zoom, Zoom, yeah, yeah. You see the position, right? Yes, after King F two. Yes, yes, black to play. Shubhdeep Das says Rook D five. Alston Boas, Kritik Gujran, and Siddha Joshi say G takes F four. But that very strong, very me, strong. No? I guess most. Uh, so what? What? Uh, what? 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 What does you, Zuya say? By the way, just uh, what would Zuya play here? I'm, 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 I'm still thinking, and I'm, I'm still not sure. I mean, everything looks attractive. Whether it's Rook D five, well, G F four. I don't know. I, Bishop I guess there. that most modern grandmasters, including me, and maybe probably also Zuya, would play something like Rook D five, and in the long run, play for B four. Because yeah. I think most modern grandmasters like the bishop pair very, um, very much. Yeah. And the modern engines, by the way, also love the all modern en computer engines love the bishop pair. But when you show it to them, then Steinitz solution is best. Better, even better is g takes f4, bishop takes and bishop g5. This okay. wins plus five or plus six if you go to the. It's really amazing. Yeah, because of the d square, yeah? It's amazing, really amazing. Yeah. And Steinitz found it without engines. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. Because it's the bad bishops are often not as bad as they seem. And when you, the bad bishops are often good defenders, like here, the bishop e3. And when you exchange the bishop, then um, white's position falls, uh, breaks apart. Because black's rook will now invade, and then nothing can stop uh, black from winning. King f6. Now he made another mistake, but this is winning anyway. H4, uh, and now Steinitz found a very beautiful win, exchanging the rooks. And now, and now, what now? Uh, maybe here one moment for the viewers. Only move to win is mm -hmm. black to play, guys. Black to play and find the only move to win. Jeel Patel, a lot of players want to play king g6, but, but this is a mistake. Is the only then one it's who a, says king e5. Uh, after knight, a uh, king g6, knight e2 is a draw. Oof. Then the knight can break free. King h5, maybe knight g3. Knight g3 check. Hmm. Yeah, we could go on, but it's, it's according to the computer only a draw. Right. So here, king e5. Only move to win. And after h5, then king f6 uh, again. Yeah, amazing. Really. Um, yeah, okay. This is, this is a game. But after h5, going back, chess is a very rich game. Yeah, every study would be better due to this direct switchback. Right, right. Okay. So in the game, knight e2 was played, um, and then the pawn in game is winning. King f4, king g4, and f4 check. And. English design. Very nice. Okay, great game. And uh, one question, Surya, uh, you know, Kasten and Luis have come up with this Fritz trainer. It's called four player uh, model, uh, four player type standard model. And they have divided the players into four types. Uh, activist, theorist, 
pragmatist and reflector have you ever heard of something like this or no i was just going to ask is there any blunderist <laughs> 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 okay no i haven't I, i haven't so that's why i'm very curious that's why the moment you asked me if i want to join i was like yes yes i want to i want to hear more about this okay so uh kasten would you like to tell or maybe louis uh, anyone about surya and i i guess kasten has studied surya's game so yeah i have studied your's games and i'm relatively sure that surya is an activist and one game we could here is a very good feeling for this intuitive um, attacks um, yeah we could look uh, first I, i i i my fingers crossed i just hope that you did not uh, look only my why can't see 2022 games <laughs> no i look at many of your oh. um i looked at uh, many of your um Games. So we could maybe start with the game Mariko against Zuya from the Spanish team club cup in um, 2017. Okay. That's... Can you open that, Zaga? Yeah. This is, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Zuya's most favorite game. Ah, yeah. and it's, it's a typical activist game, and it shows Zuya at his uh, best. And every every activist or every player would have to be proud of. And by the way, the figure behind Zuya on the in his uh, screenshot. Also, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Typical <laughs> this sword, yeah. Typical activist uh, figure. <laughs> okay, so we can we can go on uh, to uh, move. Um, yeah, move fifteenth move of black. Yeah, or yeah, you yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, can of course yeah yeah. Typical position for uh, these um, structures. It a bit looks like uh, black is white, or. Yes, exactly. Black is white. That that and, was my feeling too. <clears throat> and here Zuya showed his um, activist um, qualities. Why did you play Bishop D7 and not Bishop E6? I was asking a bit. Uh, yes, yes. So there is a very interesting story behind this. Uh, I played once in uh, World Rapid, and I was playing Almasi. I think this was in Berlin World Rapid 2015, uh, 15 or 16. Uh, 15. Uh, 15, yeah. And I was white, and in one particular Italian, I played queen c2. And then I was regretting that my queen is on c2 because he had this bishop into h3 threats in some variations. And once my black queen lands on h3, the only way to get rid of this queen is to get some piece on f1, which would be either the bishop on a2 or the queen on c2. And in the moment he played queen c2, It reminded me of uh, my game with Almasi, and now I was looking to make bishop into h3 ideas work. The reason I did not play bishop e6, it felt most natural, is there is a possibility he could play d4. And I was uh, I was more like, uh, then things get somewhat uh, liquidated. But if I put my bishop on d7, he does not get this chance. So he must protect the pawn on b5. Okay. And then I go queen c8 and I keep that. Uh, ah, that. of course, yeah, very, very good point. Yeah, so bishop d7, rook b1, and queen c8, and black, white can't defend h3. h3. And of course, activists love that. Yeah, I'm sure you were already happy with your position. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And also, always these kind of positions. I think it's from white side. It's very difficult because every move we have to. Calculate if bishop h3 is happening. If bishop h3 is happening, so as long as I'm not executing it, it's also a nightmare for uh, from white side to play. You know this kind of uh, position. This is probably also the reason why you met knight f1 with rook d8 to keep this option open. That's one thing, but also more importantly, instead of rook d8, if I take bishop h3, he takes. I take. Now every move wins on the spot. For example, if knight g3, knight f4 wins, if because I'm winning the piece, if knight one h2 instead, then knight g4 wins. He cannot take because the piece falls, and otherwise I'm threatening knight h4. The only way to uh, defend was knight three h2, and after I have to go knight h4 now. He plays f3. 
I realize this is compensation, but I'm releasing the tension. While uh, you know, in uh, during the game, he must be thinking uh, to get rid of this tension. I, I did not want to release that, so that's why not taking on H3. This is a typical activist strength. They have a good feeling for this dynamic initiative and how to make it most difficult for the opponent to deal with the tension and the pressure, to bring the pressure and tension to the maximum. Of course, I'm, I, need, I need points by I think that you are an activist and you deliver them. Thank, uh, thanks. It's uh, very good yeah, for, for, for me because I'm think, I think that it's relatively clear that you are an activist like me, only you are better than me and you are more universal than me, of course. Also, I, I, let's point it out, as long as it is not getting into endgame. <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, uh, but yeah, it's a, act, activists sometimes have certain weaknesses in certain kind of strategical endgames, I think. Mm -hmm. So if you play against Magnus Carlsen, avoid strategical endgames, win in the attack earlier. This, I, I, I remember once, uh... One of the grandmasters, you know, one of my friends suggested another friend of mine who is, uh, uh, who is not, uh, let's say, a full-time professional player. And he was saying, you know, how to improve my game. And uh, this grandmaster suggested, you know, just take care of your king and attacks opponent king, then you are all set. <laughs> so simple, yeah? <laughs> if, only <Or> not. <laughs> we could, if only we could do this. Or, anyway, or keep yeah. making good moves. Keep making good moves. <laughs> <laughs> Don't blunder. Yeah. Right. So this was a very uh, famous game. Uh, yeah, Naiji, na, uh, let's let's see. Let's uh, yeah. Let's let's see to the end because it really shows that Zoya has very strong activist. Uh, it's very fam famous. But we, can, we should see to the end. I think Knight G three, Bishop G six, Bishop E six, which is again is a strong move in the sense of maximizing the pressure and annoying the opponent to the to the maximum. Uh, I could not take bishop h3 because there is queen e2, queen f1. If he is not playing queen e2, queen f1, then I'm winning. But because of this queen e2, queen f1, I cannot take. Hmm. And here it's also, again, not so easy for, for white to, to make a move. So this was, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Maybe white should play king h2 here, or why, why didn't he play king h2? So I think it's also psychological that uh, he was probably counting on bishop into h3 every move. But not when I played from bishop d7 to bishop e6. You know, it's kind of black played bishop d7 to bishop e6. So then you don't, somehow it does not come in mind that next move he will take. If he wanted to take, he would have taken one move before. Mm. And we were analyzing after the game. He said he wanted to play bishop d2. I did not even understand why he played bishop d2. But king h2, he discarded because it is coming into this diagonal. So I can at least understand that uncomfort. Yeah, from bishop on c7, you can never play d4 and so on. But his point of bishop d2, he told me after the game, was he wanted to play c4 at some point. Uh -huh. yeah. And he was also waiting because, OK, I'm not taking on h3. But after bishop d2, there is no queen e2. So now I can take. Yeah, very deep and very beautiful is coming, yeah. b takes c6, taking back, yeah. Queen takes h3, bishop b, uh, rook b7. Knight g4. Knight g4. Um, bishop c1. And now comes the move he probably missed. Yeah, the amazing if move. Rook yeah. c7, then knight, then knight h4. Wins. Yeah. Because this is a mate here. Knight is. This yeah, bishop d2 has a disadvantages, definitely. But bishop. Yeah, it, it, yeah, yeah. Bishop c1. So here, my original idea, I was trying to make rook d6, rook f6 work. For some reason, it was not working. I think, yeah, I think he has queen e2, queen f1. So every time there is this queen e2, queen f1. No, maybe you don't, do you have time for this? No, rook d6, queen e2. Yeah, yeah. Maybe immediately queen e2 and then uh, you're on time with uh, queen f1. He probably missed your next uh, move, which is a big blow, fantastic activist, hyperactivist uh, move. Yes, yes. Or, pra or pragmatic move, of course, if you calculate everything to the win. But first, you must get the move onto the list of candidates. Yes, yeah. I, I remember how it came. I think at some point I was like uh, aiming at f2. I tried rook d6, did not work. Then I came to bishop d6. 
which is the most logical way to get the bishop to c5. And then I spotted, I'm just one tempo short. He has queen yeah. two, bishop c5, d4, I take and queen f1. Queen f1. So yeah. this, I just need one tempo and that rook a7 gave me. <laughs> Amazing, one, really one amazing. Look for a tempo is amazing. But in this game, I think the really uh, nice moment was the next move. So he takes on a7. I go bishop b6 and d4. And now the most uh, natural move, in fact, this I did not see from advance. So here, when I played rook a7, I had rook a7 in mind when I took on h3. But at this point, when I was calculating from a distance, I saw ED4 and Bishop A7 both, and I thought anything will be doable. But when this position came, all I need is the diagonal open, that F2. But if I take Bishop into A7 right now, uh, he takes on D5, I take on D4, he plays Queen F5. Until this, I saw like Queen H5. And then there is this, at subconscious level, it happens, like I, check d into c3 and very luckily i must say that i was aware of this incredibly famous game uh, krasenkov nakamura from 2007 i think barcelona i mean anybody can google this and find this game it's a completely different position different pattern but nakamura at some point makes this brilliant queen sacrifice queen into f2 hmm. if i did not know that that game i don't think this move would have come to my mind in like literally one second it's just some sort of pattern recognition. So this whole line does not work because of queen into f7 at this point. And king f7, d into c6 check. And suddenly it's white who is... Uh, I did not see a mate after king f6, rook e6, but of course, I mean... King f8, bishop a3. Bishop a3 is mate. Bishop and this is, this is the pattern, you know, if you check later Krasenkov Nakamura, you will see it was exactly this double bishop after queen into f2 check. Mm, so... Uh, so yeah, this amazing. Here. But it also makes a. I can also again make the point. You didn't calculate to the end. You just saw the positions, and you saw that you have two candidate moves. Thought it must be working, and didn't calculate to the end. This exactly. is the reason why I think that you are an activist, uh, and you have to, your your most pronounced qualities are activist qualities. Mm -hmm. So if he would have seen until the end, you would have said that he is closer to a pragmatist. Yes. Yeah, oh, I don't think my plays. But no, that's true. I'm I'm definitely not the most practical player. That's for sure. I mean, it's also my weakness. I think. Uh, yes, activists have the most pronounced weaknesses from the four player types. I know what I'm uh, talking about. They often make uh, wrong, weakening pawn moves. They often make intuitive sacrifices, which sometimes are not uh, correct. Uh, yeah, and they often rush, uh, and they yeah have some sometimes some strategic weaknesses and so on. And uh, activists should work on their weaknesses to get uh, stronger. I think I myself needed to get rid of a few of those weaknesses to get the grandmaster um, title, and this needed some time. You of course much stronger and much more universally, but you could also look at uh, certain ways to work on weaknesses because activists have the most pronounced weaknesses from the four types. De definitely, definitely. I mean, I, I lose objectivity of the game a uh, number of times. That's for sure. I, I'm, this is I, I, because yeah, Saga had well. asked me to look at you and Saturaman and you were very easy. You, uh, you To decide you was very easy. You, you are a typical activist. Mm -hmm. With Saturaman, it was more difficult for me to come mm -hmm. to a conclusion. But you are a typical activist in my opinion of course you are all strong players are more or less universal that's clear you are very you are very strong but still it can be clearly seen that the, your most pronounced qualities are clearly activists mm -hmm. okay. okay but we should of course go uh, should see of course the uh, end of the game uh, here um e takes d4 yeah c takes d4 the only the only moment when I was practical was here. Both moves were winning, bishop into d4 and bishop a7. I checked bishop into d4 for quite long time because I was really um, very excited to sacrifice three pieces in one game. But uh, yeah, I could not find until mate. 
and uh, thus I decided uh, not to not to enter this particular variation because Bishop in B7 was winning. But this was, of course, another point for me why it's relatively easy. You sacrifice a lot of pieces. This often is a clear sign that the player is an activist. Mm -hmm. So it was relatively easy for me. Okay, Bishop A7, Bishop E3. Now another. And now, now, yeah, you, yeah. Now comes another big move. But now it's clear, of course. Bishop takes D4, and this uh, just um, destroys um, White's defenses. But but based on this game, you could also feel that he is a he's a pragmatist because he calculated everything uh, really well till the end. Yeah, in many of the lines. Yeah, but in one critical decision, he ended with, I now have two candidate moves. It looks good. I just play it on intuition. I don't continue to calculate. And this is not a pragmatic approach, I think. Mm -hmm. Lewis would have calculated on, I'm sure. At least I would have tried, but um, yeah, okay. At, yeah. at some point, you have to you have to just stop and then make an intuitive decision. I, I think that's that's for sure. Um, nobody can calculate like twenty moves in a row. Um, but yeah, for me actually, the game was new. I didn't see it before, but I I really liked the game. And also, Bishop takes D four. I I didn't see it uh, even. It's very beautiful. I think. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a tremendous game, and in fact. Um, I think uh, Surya, when the pandemic began, I think this was the first uh, yeah. uh, we had done an interview, and you had shown this game, and also yeah. the Crescentko Nakamura game, and it was tremendous yeah. to to see that. And I think recently you made a Twitter post in which you yes. said to people to submit their like best move of all time. And yes, yes. You mentioned Rook A7 as your favorite move. Yeah, if I have to pick one, definitely this will top. Yeah, but I think there are a couple of more games, Kasten, can we... Of course, we can see, but as we had already discussed, and most uh, chess players like activist games most, and one reason might be Zuya's brilliant Rook A7, I just wanted to add. Mm -hmm. True. I also like Rook A7 because uh, it's very original. I have at least I did not know any pattern like that. Right. So that's right. what it is. Yes. To get this Bishop B6 and... Yes. Diagonal, yeah. Okay, then we could look at Zuya's game against Santiago Gonzalez de la Torre, oh, also, from, also from the Spanish team championship in um, 2017. Mm -hmm. Sorry, which, which game is this? Santiago Gonzalez de la Torre. Ah, you don't. It's probably ah, not yes. so famous. It's yes, probably yes, not I so know. famous. No, no, no. Also... The, the, the most shocking move I have ever faced in my life. The most brilliant and the most shocking move I have ever faced in my life. I like I never got such a cold shower in my entire life. And, and, and I, I also think that it shows your activist advantages. And the other game showed only your adva uh, your disadvantages, uh, your advantages. But this game also shows maybe di activist disadvantages. We will see. Oh my goodness! Actually, if I had to make uh, another, you know, Twitter post that what is the strong most. Shocking movie you have faced. This game will top the, my my <laughs> list. Tagar, you haven't seen this. No, no, movie. I haven't. Yeah, no. Okay, I, so let's let's see it. Okay, uh, Surya is white. Yeah. Okay, also, just for the audience, I have absolutely no clue what I have. Uh, you know, what are the games that we are going to see? Yes. yes. For me, also, it's yeah. Ninety two, ninety six, rookie one, f five, eighty five, e six. So I just want to add here that my opponent was thinking so much, like every move he was consuming quite a lot of time, which was in a way giving me a lot of confidence. Hmm. So like he's just coming into time pressure. He's never sure. So but maybe it gave you too, even too much confidence. Who knows? Absolutely. 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 And this might be also an activist. Of course, we are now getting on very dangerous, dangerous territory. But in a way, I, I also selected this game for this reason that I think most activists or several have also the same weakness in a way. For me, it would be uh, the same. I'm then get, it's easy to get overconfident. Possibly. And then miss, very much. And then miss uh, defensive resources of the opponent. Mm -hmm. Very much, yes. Okay, 94, d3, c5. E3, knight c6, bishop b2, 
so already white is just uh, significantly better right because there is just no uh, compensation for the c8 bishop and the e5 square right it's a bad bishop very strong square so he took takes and he takes with the bishop on e5 and Which this is, is of course a very ugly move uh, yeah. very yeah. ugly move takes queen d6 very concrete Yeah, and Zoya now in, starts to take the activist um, solutions. Of course, White has here many uh, here. White has many ways to get an advantage, and could also play pff, uh, Rook E two or yeah. Did you think about other candidates here, or was is it clear that Queen E two must be the move? I mean, it's very interesting that you chose this game, and I again there is a very interesting uh, story here. So. When he played queen b6, my first instinct was, uh, I think I played queen e2 in the game, yeah? Yes. Yes. Yeah, just it's let's good, make the move. move. Yeah, let's make the move, queen e2. My first thought was very positional. There is no calculation here. So he played knight d4. This is the only move that I saw. I wanted to take bishop into d4. He has to take, he cannot do anything. I wanted to play knight f3. He must go back to b6. And now I don't, yeah, I wanted to take on d5. He takes and I play queen e3. It, there is really no calculation at this point. My knight is coming to d4. I'll kick the knight on f3. Knight on, uh, I'll kick his knight. Rook d1 is coming and I'm just uh, close to winning, I'll say, at this point. It was, this would be the solution of a strategic player, but you are an activist. But there is there is one particular point here. So let's get back to this knight d4 position. I don't. So I don't think I shared this anywhere. My, it's it's also very embarrassing for me to say this, but okay, I'll let's be frank and open here. So as I said, he was taking consuming a lot of time, and I could sense that his calculation, his calculation speed is uh, a bit uh, slower than mine, and I start. So it's overconfidence. I agree, but you know, judging by his previous moves, he is taking more time. So I started to calculate the move queen d3. And he was not exactly in time pressure, but there was some time crunch. Now I noticed if I play queen d3, he must calculate knight b3, knight c2, you know, all sorts of knight jumps. And this is, of course, a much riskier approach. The other solution is clear, strategically, absolutely Correct. clear. Nothing much can happen. You must be better. While here, it's more risky. Correct. And top of everything, had he played knight c6 now, which I realized must be the best move, my idea was to come back queen e2 ah, okay. and then go for bishop d4. And my argument was, I will calculate all knight b3, knight c2 faster than him. So if I calculate within five minutes, it will take 10 minutes for him. So <laughs> I get the same position, I get five more minutes extra. I'm really ashamed to say, you know, I was thinking in this pattern. But this is interesting, no? The way you're thinking. It is. It is. So now, of course, I saw rookie too. I saw queen e2. I, I knew uh, taking on d4 is the easiest way to deal. But let's say after queen d3, if he plays knight c2, what do I do? I think uh, yeah, I take. He take. takes on. Yeah, I go king h1. He cannot take with the queen, so because of bishop in d4. Take. And if he takes with the knight, I have something bishop. Bishop a3, probably. Yeah. Bishop a3, and I'm winning. Because why am I not playing? I, why I'm not playing rook ad1? Because after knight e4, uh, there is f into e4, and the rook is protecting the queen. But bishop a3 wins. Bishop a3 overloads him. Yeah. So his only option is, uh, yeah, then cd5 or anything. Everything wins at this point. Hmm. So he has to spot this. But you can't start with cd5 here. I think pretty much everything wins at this point. Hmm. But I was more uh, concerned about knight b3, which he played after queen d3. Yeah. And here was my trick that after knight b3. So there is again one interesting moment. So as soon as I played queen e2 and queen d3, my opponent started thinking for a long time. And I was expecting, okay, after, you know, calculating knight c2, knight b3, he will eventually play the right move, knight c6. But he played knight into b3. Yeah, my overconfidence led me to blitz out my following moves as quickly as possible. 
I took on e5, e4. and uh, sorry, e4. He can't take e this because queen b3 and okay, this is just yes. a pawn. This is just a piece up, yeah. yeah. Yeah, this must be losing. So he took on a1. He took on a1, and now if I would spend some time, yeah, uh, how was it? Yeah, I think I played knight yeah, f6. Knight f6 check, right? is correct. Rook f6. Yeah, now just bishop into a1 probably is the move. No, sorry, e into f6 is the move. It, taking on f6, yeah. Taking on f6 and then taking on d5. This is not uh, really a rocket science. I mean, it. You you see queen into f6, then take twice on e6. This is straightforward calculation. It wins. But I was already so much overconfident that you know my opponent missed again. Judging being judgmental from his previous moves, that when he got to this position, I blitz out bishop d4. I was sure he missed this move because I'm completely winning. Hmm. His uh, queen is under attack. Next, I'm taking e f6, and I was expecting resignation. Hmm. Instead, but what I get. But uh, also, this this is a typical activist mistake, I think, missing defensive resources of the opponent. I know what I'm talking uh, about. I'm overconfident. You think the attack feels so strongly, it must be winning, and then you don't look for all defensive uh, resources. It can happen easily to me as well. And I think it's another point why, why you are an activist. Yeah, and I just, uh, yeah, audience can try to guess here what is the move. This yeah, is black to play. undoubtedly the most shocking move I ever faced. And I was so stunned. Like, you know, I played bishop d4, I blitz out immediately. And my opponent also blitz out for the first time, like instantly. Yeah, and black, has, black can resign or make the move. <laughs> yeah, I thought, okay, he's going to resign. And then he makes this move. I'm like, oh my goodness, what is this? <laughs> it took some time, you know, to <laughs> calm down. Do you think that this move is similar to uh, Fisher versus Byron game? Yeah, yeah, very much. Yeah, very much. Because in that also the queen is attacked, but Fisher plays some other move, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, here, how can you possibly imagine? Yeah, his queen is hanging, his rook is hanging, knight is hanging, and he makes some some move that just never occurred to my mind. Lars yeah, Fischer, Fischer played against Bern, bishop e6, yeah, yeah. instead of yes. retreating his queen. Yes. And here, a, a serious opponent, instead of moving the queen, must play the only move and can play it quickly because, yeah, it's the only move. A uh, lot of it, people want to take on d4 and maybe the fork with knight c2, but that's not working. Yeah, maybe. because then you lose the rook on f6 anyway. Right. So the right move is by Chirantan Biswas and Lars Johan. Broadcorp, well done, guys. Uh, knight c2. This was a bit way too much to handle. I mean, okay, takes knight yeah. one. So you three. move, yeah, he, he moves the rook. You take on e1, he takes on b6, and you take on d5, he takes on a2. I quickly reached this position and um, I realized this should be close to winning, but if you noticed, I gave black a lot of forced moves and my opponent only had five minutes. And even in this position, his play is a bit easier. Hmm. I mean, he's not losing immediately, although I'm better. Okay. I later checked with computer computer says this is completely winning, but, uh, the move but which over played, the board, yeah, over the board, you are never sure. You can. you can never be sure. It could also be Black has some defensive resources. There might be fortresses against the Queen later, and who knows? Yeah, yeah. So in the game, I played again purely uh, thinking about his time, and I got into this uh, the following position. Yeah, and Queen D two, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, here yeah, I sure. felt his moves are not very easy. It will not flow. You cannot, you know, you cannot blitz out immediately. Yeah, but Queen D2 also was a, criti was a critical decision, yeah? Uh, did you think about Queen... Uh, did you play Queen D2 uh, quickly? Is it absolutely clear for you that Queen D2 must be the move? Or, because here you could also play Queen B2. Yes, yes. So Queen B2 was possible, but uh, I remember that in Queen D2, I had some hidden trick and I felt he could, uh, he could you know, fall for this. Uh, after... Queen d2, uh, for example, if he plays queen c7, I think I'm taking on d5. And most importantly, the yeah, here I wanted to take on d5. 
I think he has to play queen f7, but I concluded no, this. Queen, queen d, queen d8. Mm. Ah, yeah, here queen d8, yeah? Yeah, so in your analysis, uh, I have done queen e3. A queen e3, yes, yes. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, this yeah, was yeah. the point. This was the point that I keep, uh, I keep the tension, basically. Mm. I don't... Uh, uh, this position is not clear. Not or easy, no, you have not initiative, you have compensation. But how to objectively evaluate this position is not so clear, at least to, to me. It could be any it could be any evaluation somehow. Yeah, absolutely, okay. absolutely. I, I once again I think I was very excited to see that Queen C5 does not work, which is again very tempting move. Which after Queen A. Yeah, so this was the trap I had in mind. And that's why I think I rejected Queen B2. Because I felt it's very good chance to play Queen C5. You know, ah. you keep control of everything. Nice. Okay, guys, what did Surya play here? It's a nice move. White to play. But I, I, I get Karsten's point. It's again, uh, I can imagine someone more, more composed or more practical, you know, they would uh, spend more time. Like, for example, Vidit will never blitz out Queen D2 having, you know, 40 minutes in his clock. I think in a way it's again a, a point that you are an activist. Uh, yeah, an activist does it like that, but other player types would take more time and would be more checking queen, uh, more lines in queen d2, queen b2, and going deeper to the to these lines. Yeah, not base the decision so quickly on into on certain intuitive factors. Right? I know, I know, I, I totally agree. I think again, my point was the more I think, the more time I consume, the more I give him chance to spot the tactics after queen c5. And this was, yeah, it's, it's, I, I don't understand it's a laughable decision. <laughs> like, it might work in one game, it's not going to work in every game. Yeah. Jess, Arnav Thakur, Sriram Chakradev, and Surya Thangavel. Well done. Bishop takes d5. And I think the point is that if you take ed, then queen h6 with the idea to mate. And if queen f8, there is rook e8 with game over. So, and queen d5. Take queen d5. Yeah, and then you get rook e6 anyway. Oh, the, in, the, in the end, uh, there's one. Uh, yeah, go to the ending. Yeah, here I think he resigned somewhere. Yeah. And I was yeah. hoping, imagine the position if his queen would be on d2. Then he would not have resigned because then he resigned because there is f4 check and it's mate. But imagine if his queen was on d2. Also in the game, I was thinking, should I play like this? There is another mate. You can play h4. Queen king g4. Now with the queen on d2, the only move would be queen d4 check. <laughs> I think we now know why most people like activist games most. <laughs> Also, also, do you think that uh, activists are? I mean, of course, they are. They are very imaginative, right? Yeah. Yes. And this is the point. Yeah, for Surya also, this is a very. Uh, I have seen him do this so many times that if there is a position, he will change the position of one piece to make it very interesting. And I never have thought this way about any position. You know, I'm like, okay, this is the position. But he's always looking at, oh, what if this piece is here? It makes it interesting. You are not an activist, Zaga. That's clear. Yes. And uh, it was relatively easy for me to decide that Zoya definitely is an activist. Absolutely. Amazing. And, uh, well, I guess, do you, would you want to go through the last game or is it already... I want, if, if you guys have time. Okay, we can go to the last game I selected. Zoya is white against Richard Wang from Edmonton 2016. Oh. I actually thought I'll be seeing all my lost games here. But you know, you're choosing, you choosing very interesting games where I made decisions where the games are brilliant, but I actually, from a practical point of view, I, I took many wrong decisions. I wanted to show that you are an activist and say I also there had to be some sort of activist mistakes into you into the games we look at. Oh, very, very interesting. If I have to pick my most imaginative game, I think I'll pick this one. Oh, really? <laughs> yes. 
Okay, so let's see. It's your most amazing move, Rook A7. It's your most surprised move that Type C2, and now the most. Uh, what do you say? Yeah, Imagine if I have to. It. Yeah, yeah, definitely, without a doubt. So you like my selection. I'm happy that you like yeah. my selection. It's unbelievable how you pick because these games are not even. Uh, you know, it's not like uh, very famous. For example. Um, I just looked at games where I could uh, find good proofs that you are an active. Not, I, I didn't look what are your most famous games or the games with the most mistakes. I just looked at games where you make activists' mistakes and activists' good moves. And of course, I wanted to show wins by you to have you in a better mood. Oh, I, I, I was <laughs> prepared to be grilled completely, you know? <laughs> Analyze my 10 lost games. <laughs> okay, let's see your win against Richard Wang. By the way, uh, did you did you see this, Luis? Did you see the moon Knight C two? Uh, you found it, the last game. Knight C two. Yeah. Um. Well, if if you would have told me there is a move, I would. I'm I'm sure I would have found it, but otherwise, no chance at all. Mm -hmm. I think I would have just resigned with Blake. I guess. <laughs> so it's a very understandable mistake, I would say, mm. to not see that move. Okay, so this one is a dragon. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Three all theory castles d five. Yeah, I was prepared. He, he was uh, he was playing more or less this line. Oh, C D knight d five is the main line, but he took. CD. Yeah, but he was specifically playing three D, so I knew this is likely to come. And at this point, uh, the Leko Carlson game was with bishop into f six, which is uh, one of the way. Hmm. But you took. But I saw. Five. Yeah, yeah, because I I had this prepared, so I knew computer is saying this. Yeah, and of course, I think again from this player type of view, um, Lego's choice is more a choice of a strategical player where White has this very slight advantage and no risk, while your choice is more risky. Yes, but in this case, we cannot be 100% sure if Lego was prepared or playing on the board. Uh, if okay. I was playing over the board, maybe I would go for this position. But since I was prepared, I knew computer gives you know clear advantage. I checked some lines. So I was extremely confident rook d5 rook b8 yeah here i messed up the move order i think in my notes it was starting with queen f5 hmm. and then after i think queen b7 i'm playing b3 c4 etc yeah so my yeah. so my setup was that like i have my queen on f5 rook d1 b3 c4 and you know computer says it's just over for black hmm. it's like Almost, I think, plus one it was giving back then. But uh, yeah, in the game, I mixed up the move order. And here, when he played queen b7, I started to think, wait a second, my queen needs to go to a5. But if I play queen f5 at this point, he has to take, I have to calculate rook into c4. There was a very interesting uh, moment here. I don't know if you uh, if this has been uh, analyzed anywhere, or maybe I might have analyzed this in uh, Mega. Mm -hmm. So Queen B one check, King D two, he has to take. I have to give check. Takes takes. Bishop F eight. Bishop E seven, because you want to keep that diagonal also protected. So the fact if I can play Queen A five or not depends if this is perpetual or not. So he takes let's say on G two. And I start running some way or other. So yeah, let's say C1, uh, some check, let's say B2, B3. Yeah, let's say A3 doesn't matter. He gives, he takes queen takes. Yeah, and now, so I reach this position and now queen C6 check. If his pawn would be on A6, king F5 wins. But now king F5, queen B6, it's uh, lost for me. Mm. It is... Just because of this reason, I cannot play queen f5. And it's a very direct variation. You know, you cannot, here you cannot gamble. I would never play queen f5 saying that, you know, let's see what happens. Mm -hmm. I need to know, because moves are absolutely forced. Yeah, sure. I mean, so one thing is like, uh, although you are an activist, I think certain positions, you, you have to be very accurate. And so I, I think then strong players do have the other traits as well, right? So. Oh, of course, yeah. of course. Definitely, Zoya can also calculate very strongly and deeply. 
that's absolutely clear and he had to do it uh, here to decide between queen a5 and queen e4 he had to uh, this queen a5 he had to check to the end right so queen e4. I think queen e4 queen b4 queen b4 yeah he's not creating any threats as such and uh, if he plays a5 i have bishop d2 but now of course comes a very very deep and amazing uh, move i was very impressed by the following uh, move and it, it is a certain activist strength i i think but it has also reflector here zuya also showed in a way reflector qualities i think so strong players like zuya are very universal of course mm. so reflector uh, surya is by the way the style which is very common for players like carlson capablanca smislo carpo mm. and all of them and that is especially to karsten and lewis it's a style which you cannot replicate you know it's very difficult to learn that style so yeah here my logic was very simple uh, basically yeah playing king d1 the idea is i'm stopping a5 and my king is most secured in the center if he plays a5 i have bishop d2 Hmm. And uh, initially, okay, he played f5, which makes uh, a lot of sense. I was about to blitz out after he played f5. I was about to blitz out my original move, that is queen c2. And that's it. Like I am playing, if again a5, I have bishop d2. Otherwise, I'm playing king e2, rook h d1. And you can imagine, like, okay, he's just a pawn down. I consolidated my king, it's just over. But I have this uh, huge weakness, I must say, that if I find something aesthetically beautiful or pleasing, my left hand literally have to stop my right hand from making those moves. And here, believe it or not, after f5, I saw some incredible variation where my h1 rook is giving checkmate to black king. h1 rook, wow. Yeah, wow. This, this rook is giving mate to black king without making a single move. Oh, with, oh, and this blown me away so much that uh, I started uh, calculating lines. And of course, there were a lot of mistakes, but it does not take away the brilliancy. So that part I'm still very proud of that imagination. I'm very happy about. But of course, it's hugely impractical. I don't advise anyone to play like this. You yeah. know, just play queen c2, king e2, win the game slowly. End of the day, and, you get and, only one point. And I'm sure that all strategical players would play Queen C2 100% for sure. I think, Absolutely. again, this is the point. I need points why you are an activist, and you are an activist because you didn't play Queen C2, but you went for your amazing, brilliant, deep plan with the mate with the rook H1. Also, yes. uh, Which basically does not work. I mean, there are, there are so many mistakes in this particular calculation. Okay, first of all, I was like, okay, if he takes rook into c4, I play this end game. <laughs> it's not much, but okay. Uh, I mean, ob I don't know how what is the objective evaluation, but practically, again, it's very easy for white to play this position. Mm -hmm. But from black side, you want to play queen yeah. a3. King looks really it's just, you know, king. killing it completely. And now I wanted to play, I played rook d7. But again, queen d2 looks more practical in a, in a way, yeah? Or absolutely, absolutely. But I was so tempted with the line that I saw. To start with, uh, I'm threatening rook into g7 and queen into e5. Hmm. So queen a2, then rook g7. Yeah, rook g7 takes, check, uh, king g8, uh, check, king g7, bishop f6, and queen e3, queen h5 is... G5 is fantastic, me. really fantastic. It's all I, I know why activist games are most entertaining. And Zoya, you, of course, the Indian viewers, of course, knew that study with Zoya's attacks yeah. is, is really in, entertaining and very instructive. And uh, two mistakes here. So, one after rook g7 check, he could play king f8. Mm. And here again, I had these two moves one is queen into e5, one is bishop h6. Both are losing for me. I, I knew there are draws like perpetual, 
Bishop h6 loses because whenever I will run with my king to f2, there will be queen h4 check. So you can draw an arrow, yeah, queen d3, queen c4, queen h4. Ooh. And if I play queen into e5, this is what I missed. It's again a bit psychological. Yeah, here queen into rook h7 is draw. Here it felt okay, I can go to e5, and after rook e8, I have bishop e7 every time. Mm. And if he gives check, my king is running all the way to g3. So nothing can go wrong. The problem is psychological. You don't see, at least I did not see that black is willing to exchange queens. Queen b2 is a move that does not come uh, in mind because well, black was trying to mate, yeah? But here the g7 rook is hanging. And if I go back, if you go back to this queen a2 position, <coughs> there was this, no, instead of queen a2, there is a move queen b2. Yeah. But I wanted to play queen d2 now. And now if you take, yeah, queen b1 check and take. Again, takes on g7, queen d7 check, king g8, queen e6, king g7. And first you have to take the e5 pawn. Mm -hmm. Then give again check on e7, check on e6. Now the road is clear. So queen e3, queen g5 is made. Oof. But all of this was secondary because I was almost 100% sure that if you get back to this queen a2 queen b2 position the most natural move for black here if black has enough time is to play h6 really no because it, once you see h6 if you spot h6 it feels white must resign no, no. Uh -huh. uh, rook g7 king g7 queen e5 check king h7 is resigns on the spot Hmm. everything is controlled and if you do not play rook g7 then anyway if you move the bishop queen into a2 is resigns so it's just immediately resignation like if you if you go bishop h4 then in all lines you're just everywhere lost. there's no mate anymore yeah but i was really hoping that he will spot h6 this was my <laughs> so when i played queen e1 i was counting that he has to spot h6 this is very important you have Apart to plant from from that idea in his head. It's like inception, yeah, somehow. Yeah, yeah. I was almost thinking, oh, should I, you know, pretend that, <laughs> look at the king side. Oh, no. <laughs> but so, uh, what's the move yeah. here? White to play. Maybe, uh, Luis, you yeah, can maybe try. Uh, this is not easy. Very... Yeah, I, I was already thinking how, how to ever get my rook on h1 in the game. <laughs> um, yeah. But... I I thought about maybe queen d2 with the idea yeah, yeah. if black takes my bishop, I have queen d5 check. And then if the king goes to the h file, I can start running with my h pawn and hope for some mate. I, I didn't work it out till the end, but I think it looks pretty good for white. And now h4. Put the king on h8 first. I think this was this is the variation that excited me the most. Mm. So h4. He has to play g4. Yeah, h5, g5. H6, bishop f6. What else? Yeah. And now mate. Yeah, but now I can rook h7, right? Yes. And this was my this is what made me so excited when I saw this mate while playing Queen E1. And for me, I think this is a huge weakness I really cannot control. Like I have to Typical activist weakness. You see your attack, you love your attack, you want to have it, you, you just want to go there and you can't, you can't control it, you don't look for all defenses, you don't look for the alternatives, you just go there. So, yeah, my point. Yeah, you are an activist, definitely. I, I, I agree, because if you go back directly from this position to, you know, the, the queen e4 where, white played F, white, where black played f5, Ah, you mean, like, yeah. you know, the final position, yeah? And then if you directly come back to, yeah, this position, it's somehow unimaginable that black is getting mated this way. You you saw this idea, queen e1, queen d2 here? Until queen g7 checkmate. Wow. When he played f5. Yeah. The thing is, what I really did not, uh, in retrospect, what I say, even if I show this game to anyone, I say it's very impractical. Mm. You know, you are calculating so many lines. Yes, there is brilliancy. Yes, there is, you know, a lot of joy inside if you get to play something like this. But there is no need. Pragmatics are definitely more practical. That's absolutely clear.
Yeah, I mean, you just play queens. I mean, if I get this position now, hopefully, you know. Uh, you play queen, queen c2, you press the clock, <laughs> and then it, you go yeah. on it. You don't oh. calculate queen g7 mate. You don't, you don't do that. You just play this, and then the game goes on. But Surya, would you do that? Because <laughs> you know that queen c2 is better, but where's the glory yeah, of all the beautiful lines? I know, I know. Un I, I I wish I could uh, express my feelings here. That how much you know, how much joy I get. Actually, it's very difficult to express in words. Like if I see a variation like this, not just in my game, you know, uh, the beauty in chess it gives me immense joy, and I really get attracted to it. I just I cannot this. cannot express this in words. I know this from my end game analysis. Sometimes, like the end game Magnus won, the night end game Magnus won yesterday against Artyomov. It was just so amazingly beautiful how he how he how he won with the two pawns and dominating the night. It was just so amazingly beautiful. I can't say how beautiful Absolutely. this end game analysis was yesterday evening. I can't express in words. In words, it's just maybe obsession is the right right word. I mean, I I can easily get obsessed with some uh, beautiful lines. Really, really get obsessed with it. Hmm. But practically, it has, of course, also a certain weakness. If you want to become world champion, you should try to work on this. But okay. So what is the what is the remedy now that you know? I it's clear that what is the weakness? What would you suggest as a as a prescription as remedy? Like what? How do I work on this? Maybe look at uh, the more pragmatical players. Uh, study Fisher's games. Study the games of the. Players who are very efficient and pragmatic, and then in a way try to get, uh, yeah, try to make the the cheap pragmatic solutions more easily when they are available. But it's easier said than done, I know. Yeah. So, so one of the things with Surya I <clears throat> discussed was that pra difference between an activist and pragmatic is the pragmatist would never go for like hardly ever would go for a unsound sacrifice. That's what. Uh, the definition. And is. here, the pragmatic would play queen c2, press the clock, and then the opponent would be to move. There would be no variation with mating on g7 or whatever. It's not not needed here. I, I know. I know many players with whom I have worked, my friends. You know, uh, whether it's Indian players or uh, elite elite players, there are so many players I know who never ever go for something like queen e1. You know, like for example, take Hari, take Leko, take Vidit. You know, just just no chance. Take Humpy, take Sashi. Absolutely no chance of them. You know, going crazy like this. Yeah. Mm. Yes. True. Hari can Hari can play Queen E1 only if he knows that you know queens are getting exchanged for by force, and you know they are getting into end game for sure. Hari will do this. We did do that. Harry is, of course, not an activist. That's also easy and clear. Mm. Yeah. Yes, yes, definitely. But, but whether Harry is a pragmatist or a theorist uh, is a, is a question. What is yeah. theorist? Yeah. yeah, I think it's a it's a it's an open question. You can see him as uh, you can see him as theorist or as pragmatic. Yeah, he has both qualities, and yeah, he has definitely both qualities. But he definitely is not an activist. So, so Surya's question is: What is a theorist? A theorist uh, knows his openings very well. He knows pawn structure questions very well. Um, Kramnik, Giri are typical um, theorists. They also know the theoretical endgames uh, very well. Um, yeah, this yeah, this one but way if it, to... If it is only about theoretical endgame and knowing opening, this I will also qualify. Not sure about the pawn structures, but... Yeah, and they often play openings where the pawn structures persist. For example, the French defense is a typical theorist opening. So I play that. Yeah, but it's it, you are an activist, never the, never the, nevertheless. <laughs> but uh, or king or certain <laughs> openings where the pawn structures persist to the middle game or the end game, like the banker gamut or the king's Indian with e5 or the French uh, defense with e6 d5, the closed uh, structure. These are two or the London system or are uh, in a basically typical. Um, Theorist openings where the theorists know the also the middle game motives and the end game uh, uh, structures very well. Mm, right. <clears throat> yeah, at the moment, the only theorist in the top 10 is Anish Giri. And maybe Hare, Hare Krishna, of course, can be also certainly seen as 
as uh, yeah has uh, serious qualities definitely very interesting okay just to uh, finish this game because the finish was beautiful yeah very we beautiful we must finish it of course at six queen d2 as Luis found it accurately and by the way take queen d5 if king h8 we saw king at seven yeah then uh i think it was h4 yeah uh, what was it i take yeah you no i yeah, yeah first I, it. I think it's it's the same anyway f4, take, and now take take and g3 and it just position is completely collapsing now so another thing is how practical was this to calculate there was no need right yeah probably right. that's that's also the right word there was no need to you know check all of this when i can uh, get advantage in simple manner right <clears throat> yes and queen d2 he went rook b6 which turned out to be a mistake and guys last question what should white play here not tough here <clears throat> After, very after interesting if, game you, if you found queen d2, then this you will find. <laughs> yeah, this is straightforward. Mm -hmm. What would what would a player like with it qualify as? Maybe theorist, right? I guess. Then. What is the fourth one? Reflector. Reflector, you said that is Capablanca, Smyslov, yeah. Magnus, and then there is theory, activist. then there is activity, yeah. yeah. And what is the Pragmatist. fourth one? Pragmatic, yeah. Pragmatic. No, pra pra ah, yeah, pragmatist, realist, yeah. And pragmatic, I, I was, I just was discussing that if I interview a pragmatist after such a game. Then he would be like, no, I didn't play so well. There were a lot of calculation errors. But if I interview an activist, he would be like, wow, this was filled with so much excitement, so many things happening. Yes, so yes. could be. I am oh, true, true, true. Very true. <laughs> yes. Very true. No, I'm I'm definitely very excited with all sorts of uh, brilliances. Hmm. Not just in my game, but any game. Yeah. By the way, Rook G7 is correct. Chess D Shubdeep. Uh, Samarth Karthik, well done, guys. Rook G7 and his opponent resigned because take and then he loses the rook. So, wow, what a phenomenal end. And uh, yeah, Tustin, uh, Luis, I mean, so Luis, you saw these games for the first time. Did you did you enjoy them? Yeah, I really enjoyed it, and also for me, it became very clear that that he is definitely an, an activist. And I also have to say, it's for me, it's most fun to see activist games in general. It's just the sacrifices, and it doesn't have to be objectively correct. It's just fun to see it, and uh, especially fun to see it if it's uh, working in the end. So yeah, it was very interesting for me, and also like especially Knight C2, um, yeah, very mind blowing. I didn't see that at all. It's it's yeah. not not often that there is really something that mind blowing that you didn't see it at all, and just mm -hmm. are so. Um, it's such such a big surprise for you, but yeah, very interesting to see the games. Yeah, yeah, I think Surya, uh, maybe Kasten uh, and Surya, like if a player is in one style, he wants to change to another style, it's not at all easy. It's like he has to go against his core self, sort of. Well, it's a, this is a deep and difficult question, I think. most. This is, of course, only an educated guess, but uh, most players uh, start as activists, and get more and more pragmatic as they move on because when you always make these wrong pawn moves like g2 g4 and later get mated by black knights then you get more careful and more pragmatic in a way so i think this might be the case for most players like Frank. even tal can be seen as pragmatic later. otherwise it is more difficult i think lewis is for example a pragmatic who is now more plays more like an also like an activist um Zuya is an activist and maybe should be slightly more pragmatic. Otherwise, I think it's difficult. You can also you can get qualities of a series by studying certain system openings or the structures or question. You can study all Kramnik games in the Berlin defense or whatever, and then you get. But the reflector qualities are most difficult to get. You cannot just decide I want to play like Karpov or Magnus Carlsen, and then you are you can study one year long Karpov games. You still can't play like Karpov, I fear. 
Reflector qualities, in my opinion, are most difficult to, to get mm -hmm. into. To, you cannot easily change your style to become a reflector. Yeah, um, that's for sure. And I think in general, it's, it's of course, it's much easier if you're younger and you're still like improving a lot and your mindset is not already that, that fixed, then it's easier to change uh, the style. But at some point, it's, it's just not possible or it just takes a long time. And it's also, I would say, not recommendable because your style is also where you are strong and what your, your strength. And it, it doesn't really make sense to change it if it's just not, does not fit into your, your personal approach to chess. So I, I would say, of course, you should work on your weaknesses, but you also should be happy about your strength and about your style. And so it's definitely not recommendable to, to try to, to change your style in a very radical way. It, it doesn't make any sense at all. So just be happy with your style and, and yeah, try to try to improve improve your weaknesses. And I think that's that's it for for now. Yeah. Right. I just have one thing to add here. I often notice that uh, let's say when I'm at very good shape, at my best, <clears throat> and let's say some practical player who are also at their best. For example, let's take you know Hari, or uh, or anyone, you know, someone who is very solid. When we are at our absolute best, you will not see huge difference because mm -hmm. one can play mm -hmm. at very good level. But if you take, for example, Hari's worst versus my worst, this will be hell and heaven difference. Because again, there is, I'm, I think from this discussion, an activist can easily lose his objectivity, but he's still very ambitious. You know, you, you, can, you do not expect them to play, uh, you know, get very practical, make some draws, you know, and then uh, take things slowly. So, it's applicable to many players. I, I, I also feel, okay, for example, Adivan, at least the past Adivan, uh, past Adivan as in a couple of years before, let's say, uh, you could see this kind of roller coaster. Yeah. I mean, he can start a tournament with zero bar two, then finish in uh, the podium and it can go either way. Mm -hmm. But you don't but see you this with some, uh, some practical player. You don't see this kind of collapse. They are always more control. So, this particularly gets reflected when they're in bad shape. Yes. Even when they're in bad shape, they're practical. So, you know, they're not taking too much risk. So the damage is uh, not as much as activist, I think. Yes. Larsen and Taimanov both lost zero to six against Fischer because they were always activists, always optimistic, always they believed they will win the next game and they lost all games. I, I think yeah, only activists can lose all games in such a match. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Diljit Singh Narwal says, this is such a great stream. Thank you to these wonderful folks for sharing their immense chess knowledge with us. Yeah. I also learned a lot from this stream. In fact, I think from, uh, first from Carsten uh, and Luis and then with Surya joining in and bringing in such great stuff. Uh, and guys, if you want to uh, learn more about this subject, uh, highly recommend uh, this new uh, Fritz trainer created by Luis and Carsten. It's called the four player types standard model. And it has such interesting topics covered. Like if you are an activist, then what are the strengths? Then characters, hyper activists, they go deep into, they go into the games of Judith Polgar, Anand, Kasparov, you know, all of these players. Then they also check the weakness of activists like what are the weaknesses in defense? Then Kramnik beating Kasparov there. So many Tivyakov's theories. Judith Polgar uh, demonstrating reflector qualities. And then they move on to the theorists. What are the characteristics of theorists? Positional schools. What is Dorfman's method? The flying rook. I mean, there are so many new things that you can learn from this. Ponomaryov's technique. Uh, I mean, you can just go through this. Uh, moving on to the pragmatic, then Fisher's night sacrifice, Fisher's attacks, MVL's missed win. Uh, there is also Karuana's calculation power and pragmatics. You know, what do they like? They like to grab material like maybe Korchnoi. And then you have the reflectors whose style is very difficult to kind of, uh, you know, copy or to get into yourself like Karpo's coordination, Petrosian's prophylaxis. There's also Carlson's endgames. Carpo's night magic. So I think if you want to go deep into this subject, 
this is something that you guys can check it out i have the links in the description um and uh, yeah surya did you enjoy no this took super deep i did not know such a thing was out like yes. uh, no i think so, uh, how long did you guys work uh, kasten luis for making this well how long is is hard to say but it's based on our book and and we started to work for our book uh, i think 2 years ago and also developed uh, our model even even more and discussed it a lot but uh, yeah i don't know kasten can you say i i it's very very hard to to say a number now but we worked on it for for a long time we can yeah maybe say. about a year one year or so and this is a, a video format yeah so how many hours of video is this in total uh, 7 hours or yeah i, I think 7 hours yes but you don't have what you just start watching and uh, look at the weakness please look at the chapter of the weakness of activists <laughs> contains several of my games uh, for your uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, well surya thanks for your time for for coming here i hope it was uh, in- interesting for you thank you and thanks costan for being so generous because i really came here i was uh, i did not know what are the games that has been selected so i was really prepared you know like i'll be completely grilled with all my horrible horrible games <laughs> <laughs> no no yeah, of course you. i wanted to have you in good mood but of course i chose games where you also made certain kind of typical activist yeah. mistakes because i wanted to make that point exactly yeah thank yeah. you thanks for having me thanks thanks surya and thank you luis thank you kasten for 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 your time and for making such a wonderful a wonderful uh, product and we'll we'll see you soon uh, thank you yeah many thank thanks you. for enjoying yeah. uh, us uh, and yeah We are, we hope to come yeah. back to your show in the future again of course sure. thank you caster yeah bye. thanks bye 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 guys that was surya caster and luis there it was a tremendous session i think personally it was like 3 hours of high quality chess which kind of improved my understanding of the game uh and now that when i look at games i'll try to see in what category do these players fall i understand that not everything was 100% clear in the head uh, for example the lift reflectors uh, you know what are their strengths how can someone become a reflector but as they said it's not possible that someone you have to be kind of born with it and uh, then about the theorists i mean there's so much to think about maybe i'll uh, end this stream now i'll go for dinner and think more about it discuss it with amruta but thank you all those who stayed here as pranjal jain says lovely podcast lovely stream uh, shubhdeep das says wonderful time shriram chakradev very nice stream i'm sure that this will remain here for many many players to learn and improve This is Sagar Shah signing off guys take care bye bye